Tonight, we're all putting on our best detective caps as we look at unveil, unravel, and try to understand strange stories from around the world that have happened right here in our backyard this week. And there are some stories you will need to hear to believe. And there's only one place you should be tuned in. It is this place. The only news you need to know, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dave Schrader, and this is the Paranormal 60 News. Good evening and welcome, my darklings. It has been a wild week and strange news abounds. But first, we must begin with a look through time. That every 60 years, there is a perfect alignment of stars. The moon, the sun, and the planet Earth align in a way that gestation of a miracle occurs. And we are lucky enough to have not one, but two of those miracles as part of this program. But today, very specifically this very day, we are here to celebrate not just the strange and supernatural, but our very own paranormal detective. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the heartbreaking, love-making, Viagra-taking paranormal detective of love, and it is his 60th birthday. Let us welcome to the show the one, the only, Greg Lawson. Hey, Greg, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, buddy. Thanks, happy, uh, happy thanks for the uh, introduction there. That was I hope you like the dry dress rehearsal we did. Seven incredible. minutes ago. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. This was, uh, for those of you wondering why so late tonight, Dave, well, we, we started the show exactly on time. Uh, my streaming service, not so much. It decided hmm. <laughs> these guys are so entertaining. I forgot to turn myself on, uh, yeah. and it just refused to stream. So whew, weird, but here we are, Greg, congratulations, 60 years old. And to top it off, not only have you hit this amazing elevation in your life, but you have also come to the point in the video game of our own realms that you have unlocked the next level. You are retiring from your role in law enforcement. Let's just post that. I want people to see what this handsome son of a mm. bitch like, yeah. look at that. Where'd you get that one? You on your Facebook page today. <laughs> so this is uh, law enforcement's very own Greg Lawson, and you are retiring at the end of March. Are you ready to be a civilian like the rest of us? Hey, April 1st, April uh, Fool's Day is my first day. Seems to be appropriate as a civilian, so I'm, I'm ready to go. Well, my friends, what you may or may not know about the paranormal detective could fill a thimble, but I'd like to inform you about something so important because this man is a living legend. He mm -hmm. is a gentleman who has served in most wow. of the major military branches of our U.S. government, uh, including but not limited to the Boy Scouts of America and Girl Scouts of America, where he was the cookie-selling leading champ 22 th seasons in a row. And eating. yeah, eat, oh, eating. Yeah. Oh, you weren't selling, you were eating. eating. No. Good cooks. no. Okay. Well, but he's our birthday boy. He is the wandering Viking, and he is here for us this evening. But he's not the first to have crossed that 60 threshold on the paranormal wow. 60. There is one more greatest American hero that is amongst us somewhere out there in the subtropic terrains of some kind of Antarctic battle shelter. And we have found him. We were able to link up. All of the satellites needed to get him here. I put over a dollar fifty and quarters into the Vibrabed machine to get that energy going yeah. so that we could stream him live. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, the Colonel is back. Wow. Dave, how you doing, man? Long time no see. <laughs> or eight minutes ago when we yeah, started eight minutes ago. That's that's a long time. Time. Yeah. 
yeah. man. Try to hold your breath. Not being a scripted a show, time. I think I've stayed right on track with just about everything I said the first time. I think so, sir. And um, if I can add, your ode to Greg the second time brought more tears to me and my wow. eyes as the first. That's beautiful. Just have you know that. That's beautiful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the part of the show where I like to introduce my right-hand man, where I bring in the guy that if I'm going into battle, I want him in front of me because he's drunk and will burn easily if I get cold. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Chachi. Ch uh, Chachi. Chachi. All right, here's Sweet Tea. Chachi. Uh, hey, Sweet oh, Tea. Wow. Yeah, well, <laughs> okay. yeah. All right. Oh, hey. Chachi's, uh, Oh, he had to work late. She's a little busy right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sweet Tea's with us, though. Hey, Sweet Tea. Good evening. Hmm. Good to see you guys, too. What is the birthday wow. drink that you have created to celebrate Greg, the paranormal detective Lawson's birthday this evening? I made the classic from all of our favorite Sunny D commercials from the 80s. Purple mm. stuff. Mm. Wow. I like nice. that. Can you give I us mean, a hint of what's in the purple stuff? A bunch of garbage. Oh, excellent. And you've made a video detailing exactly yeah. how you made that garbage. Am I Most right? Most of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So yeah. follow Sweet Tea on the links we include on this program so that you can find out more information. Because why You know, you Dave. Say? Yeah. If I do. Sorry to cut you off. But, you know, as, as I was looking through all the different mm -hmm. squares there, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. noted a purple theme tonight, including mm -hmm. Sweet Tea's drink. Oh, I, I broke the theme, obviously, but Ooh, uh, look at that. You're right. Now that I've moved them around on the screen, it almost appears that that Sweet Tea and Greg are in the same room, and that 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 purple hue glowing behind her is mm. exposing itself on his face, or is it his vice face versa. glowing purple? <gasps> I think mm. it's vice versa, mm. and it's I mean, this it's room causing is usually room teal, to turn. So. Yeah, so vice versa. Visa versa. Visa versa, yeah. Well, it's uh, exciting times, guys. I'm so glad that we're all here together. And mm. I figured out how to start the show. So <laughs> that's great. That one button, yeah. that magic running. button. This we're we're at 22 minutes now. It's great. I would like to tell you, Greg, <laughs> that um, we have a new item in the Paranormal 60 swag shop, and everybody what? wants one of those Stanley Cups. Oh, who can't afford them. Mm -mm. They can afford a paranormal 60 cup. Uh, Greg, look, I'm, uh, Greg, I say pay attention, boy. I'm speaking to you. <laughs> I say, I say this, this paranormal 60 cup is coming to you, Greg, for your birthday. Wow. I'm you Thanks, buddy. What a great. Pal. That's great. Big Dude. dumb cup. I get a big dumb cup. Hey, right. hey, hey what? women bag. are beating each other up over those. You I know. Have you seen, have you you seen the commercials of yeah. her big dumb cup? No. You know what, amazing. Greg, yeah. you're, you're a Texas retiree. You need to have a big cup in your truck cup holder. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> Look at that? that. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, that? Just to remind amazing. people, in case they were unfamiliar, Greg Lawson, not only one of the main contributors to this program and one of my uh, best buddies, he's also a prolific author of hmm. over fives of books really? and this is one of them greg lawson messages mm. from mothman hey. the book is out and available now wherever you buy books as long as that wherever is amazon yeah. or on greg's website other places yeah. don't carry it because i'm come I'm on no richard s I'm no, no richard s we're not we've proven that but uh messages from mothman the book is out and available right now the movie starring richard Gere's sock is expected in 2026 Ooh, I'm there, man. Mm -hmm. I am there opening oh, night. Yeah. Good. Let's get started, shall we? We've got an interesting uh, story to begin with this evening. Let's take a, a little uh, journey over to the Ukraine, shall we? In a gripping 17-second video, Ukrainian troops from the 406th Battalion have captured an otherworldly UFO using heat vision quadcopter drone. The footage, exclusively shared with the DailyMail.com, shows a disc-shaped, completely silent object hovering above the war-torn landscape, leaving the soldiers somewhat perplexed. The troops can be heard in their native Ukrainian debating the strange phenomena, with one exclaiming, What the frig is that? Why isn't it moving? My, my Ukrainian's a little rusty, so I hope I was able to translate that right. The object, warmer than its surroundings, according to the thermaling drone, remains unidentified in terms of size, altitude, and shape. But while experts analyze the footage, 
A red error message on the drone's control interface left key details unresolved. This incident adds to now a series of these UFO sightings that have been sighted over the Ukraine, sparking speculation about the intentions behind these airborne mysteries and reinforcing claims by military witnesses who report UFOs disabling nuclear weapons. The UFO, though unidentified, bears a resemblance to the Baghdad Phantom observed in Iraq in 2022. In the video, one soldier even jokingly suggests maybe we should ram the object with a quadcopter. The 406 Battalion's drone, a commercial DJ-1 brand Mavic 3T thermal imaging model, was donated through the efforts of the Deep Inspire Foundation and humanitarian activists. The troops stationed in Kharkiv have received supplies from war correspondent Joe Lindsay's team over the past year. As the drone soared above 500 feet, the soldiers speculated about the UFO's nature, with one asking, why can't he fire missiles at us? Skeptics online, though, proposed that this is a mirage phenomenon called Fata Morgana, suggesting it could be an optical illusion created by atmospheric conditions. However, the static and unmoving nature of the UFO is channeling and challenging that explanation. The mysterious encounter continues to fuel speculation and intrigue, leaving us to wonder, was it a mere illusion or an encounter with the unknown? Have you guys heard of this um, Fata Morgana? Sure. Hmm. Illusion. Wasn't that a song in the 60s? Yes. No, that was Inagata de Vida. Oh, yeah. Like Iron okay, yeah. Butterfly. Yeah, no. Yeah, sorry, my uh, bad. Sorry. Yeah, Fata Morgana is this uh, illusion that's believed. They named it after Morgana from the King Arthur fables, uh, that she was able to glamour and create things that weren't really there. And the concept, I guess, and Greg, you've seen this being in the military and flying, right, is that the, it's atmospheric sometimes. Uh, conditions allow things to look as though they're almost flying in air. Like you could be looking out at the ocean and above the ocean is a cruise ship that looks like it's 20 feet, 50 feet off the water. Correct. Yeah. Um, that's where the flying Dutchman comes from. And some of those other legends. Um, it's, it's just like uh, when you're in the, uh, in, in the desert and you have a mirage, uh, you're looking at atmospheric conditions that are creating an actual, uh, like a lens throughout the uh everything that's in the air and the water and everything that's there and it creates this lens and it kind of eh, it modifies our our sight a little bit that was kind of boring yeah. no but it, it's yeah. insightful and what i like about it is and what i think is interesting about this story is the fact that that's when you're in a static position looking out at something right. that's having that this is a moving drone that is moving forward closer to the object and the object does not seem to move that's so odd it, yeah, yeah it would seem like you would see as you got closer to it, you would begin to see the ground underneath it or something right. else appear. Instead, they're getting these clear images of this UFO like craft. And I wanted to ask all of you, what are your thoughts about this? There are so many of these locations and throughout the Ukraine war, there have been many visualizations of these UFOs, these different craft hovering over the area. They're not making target. They're not shooting at anything or anybody, but they are being witnessed from both sides, Russia and the Ukraine. What do you think is going on here? Colonel, what's your thoughts? Well, Dave, um, you know, I think because more people are looking up to the sky, kind of like mm -hmm. the whole fireworks thing, you know, you see a lot more UFOs in the sky when people are looking at fireworks in the 4th of July and things like that. Maybe, just maybe, Hmm. Folks are looking up a little bit more, and they're seeing these because of that. All right, sweet tea. Thought. You look like you have something that you wanted to weigh in on with this. What, what's your thoughts on why are we suddenly seeing these? Are they friend? Are they foe? Or are they neutral and just observing? Well, they've we've been seeing UFOs around uh, nuclear nuclear stuff all the time and um yeah they show up around dangerous places to keep us yeah. in check they're not i don't think they're not trying to make anything worse if anything they're keeping an eye on us and you know you guys are going too far they're keeping an eye on us and it, even in that article there was someone who was like these people with the drones know what to look for. They know if it's an, a mirage or if it's some a trick of the light or something. They know that that's not normal to see. 
This mm-hmm. is just someone visiting and saying, hey, watch your backs. We're watching you. We could make it worse. We're not going to. Please don't make it worse. So. Cosmic Joe Chronicles pops in with a little information. Aliens eat a lot of sausages. In case oh, people are curious know. what yeah. they're interested in. Uh, Greg, uh, these beings, these these craft, maybe it's not even beings. Maybe they're drones themselves sent from uh, otherworldly beings to to lay or bear witness to what's going on. What's your take on all of this? Yeah, that would make a lot more sense. That's what we would do as far as when we're doing exploration. You know, we don't throw a human being down in something. We, we send some sort of little robot down there to find out what the atmosphere is like and all that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that would make sense. The interesting thing about this particular one is as far as the drone, there's a couple of other ones uh, where the drone, you know, if it's something wrong, with the drone and like you said that they were they were getting error codes and that sort of thing um it's not in the drone software because this object is saying stationary as a drone is moving so you know if it was something um that the drone was having a problem with it would stay wherever it is where the drone was looking but that's not the case right so that's a really intriguing thing for me is is uh seeing this and it's either something in the software that's blotting out a particular area um, out there, not in the drone, but out there, or it's something out there that's, uh, you know, creating this void or uh, this object, whatever that is. Thesis himself says logical answer here is a more superior military technology checking in on the action. From Russia though. Uh, Not necessarily. If they were superior, and they were flying and they could be that close. I think they would be, if it was Russian, they would be blowing things up and taking aim at these people that are down there right, right. viewing them. But that's my take on it. So Paranormal Pixie drops $2 donation on us saying, Yay. happy birthday, Greg. Yay. Yeah. Thesis himself says uh, with $10 uh, in the donation ooh. here, Greg doesn't look a day over seven. He doesn't. It's nope. Seven decades. Yeah. Stephanie Hawkins Lynch drops five bucks our way and says, happy Yay. birthday, Greg. Stephanie. Hey, Thank Stephanie. You. Doof, wow. doof, paranormal. That's Karen from Australia to the rest of you that don't speak fluent Aborigines. Wow. Mm. LOL. What an intro for Greg. Those radio days paid off. Happy birthday, Greg and the Colonel. And there's a $10 donation. Wow. Let's look at the four ninety nine. Over from Gypsy 13. That. Thank Good you, Greg, Lord. for your service. Uh, Rick Robert, uh, Roberts. <laughs> Rick, <laughs> Roberts. Rick Roberts says, Happy 29th birthday, Greg. Have a shot of Rumplemints. <laughs> oh, yes. That's right. What about I love me from Rumplemint, boy. Goldschlager. Yeah. Ben Bacon oh, is me, Candy Turner. Happy birthday, Greg Arama. Looking good wow. in uniform. Man, our little awesome. Greg is all broke. Ben. Awesome. Uh, so that's a lot of, lot of love coming your way there. That's kidding, yeah. man. Yeah. Um, and thank you very much for all the lovely donations that will go directly to me buying stuff to give to Greg. So we can. <laughs> there you go. There yeah, you go. Cool. Uh, listen, we have a couple of guests that are going to pop in here in a little bit. We've got some exciting news about a cool project coming up. Uh, so we'll talk about that when they pop on. But I want to uh, cover another weird story. This goes back to 1988, which. If I ask you quickly, how long ago was that? Most of us would say like 15, 20 years ago, right? Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. 36. That is, nope. What? That's not correct. Years ago. I know that's <laughs> true because my oldest son was born that's in 1988. Here's, here's the story. Let's see if you guys remember this tale. This is an interesting one. When I first saw the picture, I was like, am I looking at a murder scene? No, no, no. This is the enigma of Katie, the woman who grew gold. In 1988, the world was introduced to Katia, Florida housewife, with an extraordinary claim that she could spontaneously grow patches of gold leafing on her face and body. But Katie was no ordinary psychic. She had no intention of cashing in on this unique talent. While parapsychologists like local psychiatrist Berthold Schwartz and American professor Stephen Browdy investigated, Katie's abilities went beyond the metallic magic. Not only could she bend metal like Uri Geller, but she also played a role in solving criminal cases as a consulting psychic in Vero Beach, Florida. Now, despite her lack of formal education and challenging upbringing, Katie displayed moments of genius, even writing accurate quatrains in medieval French. Yet her most perplexing talent 
was the appearance of gold leaf on her skin, causing discomfort akin to a supernatural STI. Investigations into Katie's mysterious phenomena revealed the gold wasn't pure, but rather 80% copper, 20% zinc, and it was more resembling brass. Yet blood tests and incomplete university studies found no abnormalities in Katie's physical system. Some skeptics, though, suggested that Katie might have just gone out and purchased some gold foil production and um, kind of tacked it on herself. But analysis showed the commercially available gold leaf was virtually identical to Katie's mysterious flakes. This led investigators to believe in the existence of spiritual support, a psychic power that unintentionally produced gold foil. Hmm. That's a that's, again a really weird, lame superpower, if you ask me. Despite <laughs> numerous examinations, and the exact moment of foil production was never captured on film. Katie underwent intimate examinations, if you know what I mean, to rule Ooh. out fraud, yet mm. the evidence remained elusive. In one instance, she even manifested stigmata, adding yet another layer of mystery to her story. Mm. That's the focus. When you are so, you're pushing so hard to get gold to come out of your skin that you begin having stigmata, yeah. hands open, <laughs> And your forehead hurts yeah, bleeding. You might want to back off the effort. Yeah, just, just so yeah. Off cool. the gas Throttle pedal. back on the production there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. God. Katie's life was far from glamorous, marked by an abusive second marriage and a challenging home life. Some speculate that her heightened stress levels or psychic abilities influenced the manifestation of this gold leaf on her body. Now, in 1990, during the filming of an episode for a little TV show called Unsolved Mysteries, investigators attempted a six-hour test to capture evidence of Katie's foil in action. However, she was foiled. Luck was not on their side. Katie eventually just faded into obscurity. Interesting. Aww. The enigma of Katie, the woman who seemingly grew gold, remains unresolved. Was it psychic phenomena or an elaborate ruse? The mystery endures, leaving room for believers to ponder the possibility that Katie was indeed the real deal. Now, we're going to start with you, paranormal detective, as you are mm -hmm. in law enforcement. If you use a psychic who is extremely adept and has been helpful on solving cases, and she's been able to prove in front of people she can bend metal to her will with her psychic abilities, then she starts sprouting gold patches now, if two of the three things she's reporting to do have come true and are very valid, how quick do we dismiss the gold sprouting? The gold sprouting. <laughs> um, so, so, Dave, uh, yeah, being 60 good, years good. old, in 1988, I was actually in a uh, what's called the uh, critical incident team. It was a uh, mental health investigator. So we used to go out and do uh, investigations on people that profess to do certain things and hey yeah i know <laughs> and uh it's interesting uh, a lot of these uh fantastical go ahead uh -huh. and spell that one no nope, uh, fantastical situations that would happen <laughs> right are you drinking uh, uh champagne there colonel Did i, I am in your, honor, in your honor in your honor sir wow man yes i Corbell, am out of a, a not even right, the right back into it, sixty-year-old ADHD boy. Let's yeah. get you back on track. Yeah. <laughs> so, you would go out, I, and I know you would interview people with, that made remarkable claims, and you right. know that a lot of them were me mentally challenged. But in this case, this woman's helping law enforcement. She's right. she's proven her worth. So, uh, people can have some uh, some questionable things happen with them. That doesn't mean these other things didn't happen. So whatever is working, let, let's say they're good at predicting whatever or seeing things mm -hmm. and, and it helps the investigation. That's great. But it's, it's interesting on some, like I said, the more uh, amazing things, well, doesn't happen in, under any controlled experiments. They just so happen to, ha uh, to happen as soon as no one's watching. Right. But then how about you sit there watching her? And all of a sudden, like wounds begin to open on her forehead yeah. and palms. That's yeah. crazy. When stigmata yeah, right. suddenly yeah. appears when she's trying to push gold out her pores. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, hey, Katie, daddy needs a new Benz. Push out some yeah. gold. I don't know if you saw zinc and bronze or whatever. Zinc and, and, 
and copper. It was yeah. kind of a cheap You're not getting a Benz out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Geez, yeah. You might get it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe he wasn't that. really growing it. Maybe she was secreting it. You know, oh, right. growing That's, maybe could be pure. And then when you're secreting fats and oils and just so happens to be copper and brass. Why do you got to make it sound wow. so gross and dirty? All Seriously. Time? When you get Ew. to be 60, you start really looking deeper into things there, Dave. You'll, you'll see. Too deep. Too deep. You'll understand soon. I don't want to get there. Yeah, you understand soon. Uh, you know where I do want to get, though? There is something very exciting coming up this weekend. Edge Life Events Reawaken. You can expand your spiritual journey at the Premier Holistic Expo of 2024. That's Saturday. This Saturday at 10 a.m. The doors open till 7 p.m. March 2nd. Tickets are just, are you ready for this? Seven bucks pre-sale. Ten wow, bucks. What? Or, yeah. That is I like great. It. I like, like it. You're losing money if you don't go to this event. Seriously. Exactly. Seven bucks if you pre-order, 10 bucks at the door. It's at the Delta Hotels by Marriott, Minneapolis, Northeast. It's on Industrial Boulevard in Minneapolis. And joining us now is Kelly. She is the publisher of the Edge Life magazine. She is uh, Yay, a long Kelly. friend and associate in the field. Kelly, welcome to the program. Thanks for being here. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, our pleasure. So let's talk about this is pretty exciting. You're reawakening the uh, Edge Life Expos. You're giving a chance for all new people to come out and hear from some of the greatest speakers and presenters on the planet. Talk to us a little bit about what people can expect. First off, Dave and team, I want to let you know that I'm wearing my ghost shirt in your honor. Like, all right. Like, right? Like just, just a little golf clap. Just like, yep. Oh, very nice. Rock on. Rock on. Uh, you, you know what? coming together it's going to be fantastic it's just oh my gosh 75 vendors and guess what somebody was supposed to be in australia this weekend and all of a sudden he's not yeah hmm. it's weird how they change those laws that suddenly i'm not welcome anymore wow <laughs> inappropriately but, uh, touch one kangaroo and suddenly you're not welcome in a country mm -hmm. sure. Up well, that. actually, I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm kind of not because I'm really excited to have you there. So you can always go back to Australia, but this is That's only right. going to happen one time a year. So, you know, you're here. It's all good. That's right. So you've got 30 plus featured speakers. You've got a psychic roundtable taking place, over 75 vendors and experiences on hand, thought leader panels, sound bath meditation. And that's just the ones that I can think of off the top of my head or read off the banner that I'm showing on the screen for people <laughs> watching. That. Very exciting. Yeah. Echo Bodine is going to be there. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's going to be great. But we're going to have a book swap. So you know what? It, bring a book that just like inspires you, like one that you've been in the bathtub with, you've caused trouble with, you've done all these different things with, bring it, share it. I know the thought bubbles all around you. I know, <laughs> right? Share it. And then we're going to have like 300 books from people, including yourself, from all over the country. And I'm actually, any of the authors I'm talking to, I'm asking them to sign their books. So there's going to be all these little hidden treasures and you're going to bring a book and then you're going to be inspired and you're going to take a book. Then we're going to have a raffle with over, look at that. I was just on Amazon grabbing the graphics so I can make your sign up. Nice. Right? I mean, people aren't doing that. And I was inspired by the fantastic little libraries that you see when you're walking your dogs in the neighborhood. I was just like, ooh, we should have that. Right. I, I know we're going to get just this total crazy bit of books. So we're going to have a raffle. We have over like $3,500 of prizes that people can buy raffle tickets for. And then, yes, the, the vendor fair. It started off with like, who do we want to have? And we invited all these amazing people. And then it just started to snowball. We have a waiting list. So we have all these different modalities. Just come and be curious. Like, if you want to get your freak flag on and just be curious and go around, it's the place to be. Agreed. These okay. are uh, amazing opportunities to meet with like-minded people, get to meet some of the biggest names in the Twin Cities area and surrounding areas. They're all going to be there with one thought in mind, and that is improvement on all walks of our life, from the spiritual to the physical to the metaphysical. And this is going to be an exciting event. I'm, I'm pleased to be a part of it. I know uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Again, expand your spiritual journey at the Premier Holistic Expo of 2024 right here in the Twin Cities. Edge Life Events Rio weekend tickets again only seven bucks doors open 10 a.m goes open till 7 p.m i'll be talking from 4 30 to 5 30 i'll be doing intention manifestation and time travel therapy i know it's like bam 
Like seriously. Yeah, boom. And then we're gonna have a Medicine Buddha in Carmen, and it's gonna be uh, Frankie Christina with a 52 inch gong, just like totally going like amazing. What? I missed that. What? You said what gong, that not gong, no, boys. Oh, 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 okay. oh okay. No. Dong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. We'll work on that for next year. And Kelly, and maybe you. maybe with the money you raise, you could get a microphone for your computer instead of a tin <laughs> can and yarn because your your audio. Wow. Is not hear wow. me at all. Oh yeah, but you might want to lift the microphone by your mouth instead of letting it hang at your navel. Oh. It's yeah, it's a little clearer. Is that, that any way. better? Oh mm. yes. Oh guys, I am so <laughs> sorry. That's okay. No, no we can it's hear not. you. It's horrible. It's, it's perfect. We've heard you. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. I'm trying to I'm trying to save face for you, and you're just throwing yourself. You're right. Okay, she sucks. I have no understanding or explanation for why her her audio blows. But I'll wow. still be at the fair, and I'll be loud and clear. Um, and won't I feel bad when I get there and realize that's just Kelly's speaking voice? She swallows yeah, exactly, style, and it sounds like she's talking through one all the time. Oh my goodness, you guys. I'm sorry. I didn't well, get to test things out. I apologize. No oh. worries. I'm excited no. about being out there. Thank you so much for inviting me and allowing me to play along with you guys. We look forward to doing it this weekend. It'll be fantastic. And I'll have a much better mic, I promise. I appreciate yeah, right. that. So check it out. We've got links for it on today's program guide or go to darknessevents.com. That's darknessevents.com and sign up now. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more of the best in paranormal programming right after this. Hey, we're back. Welcome to the show. I'm Dave Schrader. Over there, that's the birthday boy, Greg Lawson. Below me, my very own Bobby Brady. It's the Colonel. And over there, the daughter with the hair of gold and curls. Well, that's sweet tea. Tressa Slater is in the house. You might recognize Tressa as one of the two hosts of the Monsters Lounge, heard right here on the Paranormal 60 Podcast Network. Yay! Ours. So we've got hey. her every Wednesday, every Tuesday night. You can see her over on her podcast. If nice you haven't shirt, had a Dave. To check it out. Yeah, you should definitely. And they have swag too. Look at that. Oh, I like that shirt. Well, oh, is that from your? Uh, no, I like that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. And well, she told me today show? she's sending one to Greg for his birthday as well. No, I am not. Oh. Wow. Okay, yeah, that hurt. Yeah, yeah, me. I'll send you this one. To I don't. I don't like it anyway. It's very itchy. Mm. Uh, How dare you? <laughs> I didn't make it up. Oh, no. Those wool oh, shirts man. are itchy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's get back Look at to the that. show. We've got so much to discuss. That's subliminal advertising there. Mm -hmm. So this was pretty cool, right? There was a new discovery that was just found. Time traveling with a ring. That's how this article uh, begins. And I, this thing is so gorgeous. And, and I couldn't wait to share this because it's just such a cool deal. And a jaw-dropping archaeological find, a 1,900-year-old gold ring with a holographic twist has been uncovered in the grave of a Roman noblewoman named Abuta Quarta. The stunning piece of jewelry discovered near Rome at the Grotta Ferrata Necropolis offers yeah, a glimpse yeah, into yeah. ancient artistic techniques and mourning customs. That's the way you do it, Greg. When you can't say the words, you just hit them, push through them like you've mastered Go. it. Nobody's yeah. questioning. Everybody's yeah. drunk in the chat room, so we're fine. Yeah. That's how yeah, you do exactly. it. Sounded good. The, to ring, me. the ring was found in the hypogeum of the garland, and it reveals a lifelike holographic image of a beauteous son, Titus Carvilius Gemello, who met his end at the tender age of 18. The underground chapel, unearthed in 2000, housed two remarkably preserved marble sarcophagi inscribed with the names of the mother and the son pair. Look at Look at the detail in this ring. It's gorgeous. It looks like you're looking through a window into the past, into this. They call oh it the God, holographic that. Image. It's gorgeous. What technology that they had back then to create something like this. Uh, the state of preservation in the tomb left archaeologists in awe with Carvillo Gemello, even earning the title of Mummy of Rome, which isn't given out much. I think he's the first one. Yeah, he is the mummy of Rome. The, the embalming Rome. process, coupled with an abundance of floral garlands, created a rare spectacle. Carvillo's fractured femur and elevated arsenic levels hinted at a mysterious cause of death. I don't think that's really hinting at a mysterious <laughs> cause. When you're finding high levels of arsenic, I think that pretty much tells you what uh, killed him. Yeah. Possibly septicemia or poisoning. Although... A lot of the ways that they used to preserve the bodies was with arsenic, if I remember correctly. So that sounds right. Would the body absorb it? I don't know. I don't know how that all right. works. I don't know. 
The real gem was found on uh, a beauteous finger, the holographic gold ring crafted with a rock crystal carbuchin. The ring features a finely executed bust of her departed son, creating a mesmerizing, mesmerizing, go ahead and have a drink. That one hurt my head. Um, mesmerizing. I mesmerizing. Yeah. It mm. creates a mesmerizing holographic image. Unlike traditional cameos, though, this yeah. ring boasts a shockingly realistic image carved behind the stone, producing this luminescent effect and adding a mysterious depth of 3D illusion of the deceased. The ring, which is now residing in the Museo Archeologico Nazionale di Palestrina in Italy. Mm. It's like Impressive. I grew up there. Yeah, like, it's hey, like yeah. yeah I'm like, what? Who am I yes. talking to here? It's pretty amazing. Greg just can't let me have it. He's just got to shake that purple head in righteous indignation. <laughs> <laughs> shake that blueberry uh, in the head. And... It's not just a piece of jewelry. It's a time-traveling hologram telling the tale of love and loss in an ancient world. And uh, I'm already knocking them off, and I'll have them on the Paranormal 60 Swag Shop, along nice. with this amazing tumbler. So if you want to order your I like own. It. I like it. Big dumb cup. Big dumb cup. Uh, yep. Why are you hey, what, your it what? That's one of my favorite stories that you just read. That was, I really like that. That was pretty amazing. Is it because of my mastery of the many languages that I was able to prove? I it, was, it was incredible, but it was that a really too. touching story. It's a really amazing thing that the, that they did. To remember Especially this person. since they couldn't cool. get my name right on my class ring. I mean, seeing something like that really amazes <laughs> that, me. <laughs> that is pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. Who's beeping? Somebody's beeping. I keep hearing like a... Is it... Colonel, is there a fire in the building you're in and you don't It know could be. It? I'm on the 40th floor, so I'm hosed. Is it, your, let it, is happen. it your 1980s calculator watch, Colonel? That's... that's Creating the beeper noise? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, idea. Wait, what is that? What is that? It's time now for upon further review. Wow. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a while since we visited with Upon Further Review, and I wanted to task one of my buddies to go out and watch a movie with a paranormal slant. A movie that surprised me was paranormally themed, and I reached out through the, the wonder and the black magic that is cellular technology, and I texted Ooh. one Chachi Arcola, and I said, Dear Chachi, how would you like to watch a paranormal theme movie? And he said, Dave, count me in. You know you can count me in. I can't make it to the show on time, but I'll be there. <laughs> oh, wow. 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 wow, look at there. Oh, this is Drinking, amazing. No less. Yeah, Even congratulations. Are Thanks purple. for being here. Good to see you, Dave. What is with this purple <laughs> theme, man, that I didn't get the memo, obviously? Yeah, well, you have to be part of the show on a regular basis. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. You don't just show up when you want. And, uh, oh, let's talk about this. Yeah, so, I got, uh, you know what? I think I'll be there today. What the hell? Chachi, I need to know. Are you uh, naturally a fan of Clint Eastwood spaghetti westerns? Uh, I had never seen one before a couple nights ago. All right. Are you a fan of Clint what? Eastwood? What? Are you an American? Let's start with that. Right, I can't yeah. Are you... what, what was it, Chachi? I can't afford cable. All my birthday money went to Schrader last week. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Wasn't even my birthday. That's how drunk he was. He's just like, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna send, send him you a gold watch with your name engraved on it. Don't hang that. Yeah, it's really great. Uh, so you, this this was a surprise to me. Let's share. Uh, you know, again, Clint Eastwood, a spaghetti western, mm -hmm. and this is the uh, trailer. Yeah, so there you have it. For those of you that have not yet been introduced to one of the men with no names, Clint Eastwood spaghetti westerns, that, if anything, should be a reason to make you want to watch it. But now that you know there's a paranormal slant to it, that should make you want to watch it even more. So, Chachi, you sit down for your first time to watch a Clint Eastwood spaghetti western. First of all, what's your takes on that? On the whole movie or just the beginning? Just the fact that it's a, a, a movie. <laughs> it's really five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> what, what what did you think of uh, the, the concept of you were finally sitting? Are you is this thing on? Greg <laughs> Lawson's school of movie <laughs> review. Happy birthday, by the way, Greg. I, I missed that. <sighs> I, I was listening on the drive in. 
I heard you guys talking about STDs and Viagra. I'm like, I got to join this show. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's going on, but it seems what like a lot of What is going fun. on? Yeah. Uh, so I was, you know, sometimes you can't move when you're watching a movie. That's where I was with this one. Okay. I, I was watching it going, okay, this thing's 50, was it 51, 52 years old? 1973, yeah. 51 years old. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The backdrop is basically a bunch of two by fours on a beach. It looked like in the middle of somewhere. How dare you? No, <laughs> not correct. That's How Clint Eastwood you're talking about. But the story, son, get past the the look of the town. What what, are, what did you think of the story? I love the story. You should okay. have said that to begin with. That's I a great review. I'm telling Thanks. you, I, I learned from the best. I like it. I've like seen you do reviews. Yeah, no, come on, oh, come on. <laughs> Here's the thing. At least Greg's reading the, the glass the, houses the and rocks and something. The there's a saying there somewhere. Yeah. Nope. So <laughs> Dave says me this thing. Says, do not look it up. Just watch this movie. Yeah. Okay. Sat down, turned it on, and I immediately see very, very old graphics on the film on the on the TV. And I said, Dave, am I about to watch a 50 year old Clint Eastwood? He's like, Yep. I said, and this has a paranormal slant to it. He said, wait till the end. I said, okay. So I'm watching it. Not a lot of action, a lot of great acting. Eastwood directed it too. And I'm like, you know, again, 50 years ago, he was probably what, in his 30s? Mm-hmm. So what relatively early in his direct, career. Was it his first? Okay. Yeah. And wait, whoa, what words did the Colonel just <laughs> <start? laughs> directorial um, uh, debut? Yeah, but a bit. Is that what you should go for? There you go. There you go. Dictorial. <laughs> dictorial <laughs> review. Dictorial. Yeah, it's a great dictorial review. <laughs> um, and I, I don't think you're 10 or 15 minutes in. First off, rated R in the early 70s. I'm like, okay, what am I oh, getting myself into here? That was a rape scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 15 minutes in, and there's a rape scene. No yep. thanks. And I'm like, was the sixties Eastwood? I was very taken aback by that, mm-hmm. but that I had to remember. Mm-hmm. Although it was filmed in the seventies, it was actually depicting the fourteen seventies. So <laughs> the fourteen five hundred years before. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's four. No, I don't know if that's right, but I'm <laughs> intrigued. I did yeah, that cowboy. The, they said the do whole not cowboy watch thing went forever. Anything. Yeah. Anyways, so. It I'm watching it. I'm like, I think something special is going to happen, but I'm not sure what. How is this going to turn? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Uh, how is this going to turn paranormal? Right. And then mm-hmm. during the movie, and do you want me to go through a synopsis, Dave? I've got I about want a, a no, scene no, by no, scene, please. blow by blow. Let's please go. Do. Every single shot. Let's hear it. Finally, a supporter. Thanks, sweetie. You're welcome. Anyways, oh. guy rolls into town. And, Connection. Oh, I you got rid of me. <laughs> Guy rolls into town. Nobody knows who he is. He's not giving his name. Gets into a fight. Kills a couple people. Then he goes to bed and he has a dream. And in the dream, he's dreaming about something that happened in the past. Ah. And the guy doesn't look like him. But I'm like, why is he dreaming about this? As the movie goes on, you learn more and more about what he dreamed about had happened. <laughs> Fast forward to the end, Dave. He's Satan. So close, Colonel. Can I give, can I give <laughs> really? it away? Dave? Can I tell no, what happened? No, I want oh. people to watch it. I don't, what about the text? Let me. What, what kind I, of review is that? Let me, let me review the original text I sent to Chachi. <laughs> I go, uh, log on early, please, so we can discuss the movie review. And he goes, Yeah, you can hit the fan at work. I'm going to be late. I won't be there by nine, but I'll be on as soon as possible. And I said, uh, Okay, don't yeah. give the ending away. Just tap dance around the surprise of the movie. What did you do? <laughs> Can I tell what happened? <laughs> the music wants to point out, remember when this used to happen to Sweet Tea? Now she's the normal one. That's a new oh, bar wow. that we have set. Wow. That's hey. a, yeah. That's oh, wow. So anyways, that's listen. Fair. I, yeah, she's, having she's never like, seen yeah, a Clint Eastwood Spaghetti Western, and yeah. having never seen... A spaghetti western. How in the what? world does that happen? Uh, yeah, I'm you grow up. You know, Chachi, I'm like some great questioning your American. Yeah, Colonel, let him finish. Yes, talking. Sir. So go, <laughs> Chachi. Just so one phantom, it sucked. Five phantoms, it's amazing. You you see the paranormal twist. What do you make of it as a paranormal movie? One, it sucked. Five, it's amazing. I am going to say that. 
the fact that it doesn't use special effects. It doesn't use a bunch of the tools and technology that we use today. This was a group of 25 actors acting for Phantoms. Wow. Wow. Or, wow. Impressed. The only thing I would have liked to have seen differently. Mm -hmm. The only go. thing is I think perhaps he was miscast. I believe someone like a Brad Pitt or Johnny Depp would have been better in that role. <laughs> Oh, they yeah. Been, yeah. Let me, now that you at mentioned the time, it. they would have been one and a half years old, yeah. and I don't know that they could have pulled off that role. If they were they Satan, they could have done it. You've never seen Brad Pitt in Fight Club then. Okay. He could yeah. have pulled that role off. Obviously. At the age of one and a half. Yeah. Maybe. Correct. Maybe. I don't know. You know, so, you know what, Dave? What? Uh, Colonel? I was going to say, Chachi's review makes me want to see that movie again. a lot to make up again. for, not being on the show much. Go ahead. <laughs> I just want to watch the movie again. He just He just lit the fire. <laughs> right? of wanting me i want to see that movie again and i've seen it like within the last year he painted yeah. a whole picture there i just can't that's because yeah. davenport has a good question <laughs> he did. He did. He's <laughs> thinking old chachi and never see a spaghetti western well, and you know what first but... of all first of all let me say this i don't necessarily put the onus on you chachi because you you grew up on the east coast you were kind of a snobby rich kid growing up and then moved to texas Very and rich. friends with greg and the colonel who under their tutelage, I would have thought at some point in your massive indoor movie theater would have taken you in and said, we're watching an old uh, spaghetti Western. But no, they're too busy falling asleep with ices in their hand. They're ha one hand down their pants, the other one That's in a bucket. That's amazing. And, and, you, and, I, how do I know? Because I've been there. I've See never... <laughs> I've never slept better than uh, in uh, yeah. his uh, on, theater with an icy in my hand yeah. where it needs to be. We still first haven't James been able Bond to get film. first James Bond film I ever saw was because of you, Dave. What oh, yeah. is happening first, right now? Again, no James grew Bond up in the Hamptons no essentially, with... went to school I... at Yale. I, I did Chachi, not see what have you, you did. seen a movie I... before you met any of these guys? Any the movie first ever? movie I saw yeah. ever, yeah, Back to the Future. What wow. is happening? That's not a good move to start off later. With, but okay. I was born in '82. This is just not part of. And you know, we just and and we then the next one was Mr. Goodbar. And did then, you not have yeah. a TV? What? I hear you, sweet tea. No, was, I'm, I'm was picking much up what you put down. Internet porn to watch any movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The introduction of internet porn. Chachi stopped caring about the electric cowboy. I mean, that's um, fair, but the we 80s. did not have TVs, but we had Montgomery Ward's catalogs. Okay. Oh, nice. yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Okay, that's a lot yeah, of information. I, I get it now. You don't see anything uh, else. Let's go to our next news story, shall can, we? Can I, oh. uh, <laughs> no, of course, birthday boy. Please, you have the. Can, can I? Can I? I don't need to ask Chachi a question. Have you seen any other? Um, you know, Clint movies. Eastwood movies. Oh. I saw Gran Torino. Okay. The Outlaw Josie Wales. Have you seen it? Yeah. No, sir. How about Nothing that Harry? involves a uh, like a gun shooting at criminals or anything like that, right? <laughs> no, no, sir. No. What about with a chimpanzee? Yeah. Well, he yeah, didn't do exactly. Any of those. That was an orangutan, you moron. So please. But it was oh, good. like it's it was a, wow. like there's any difference. Come on. It's a monkey. It's a names. monkey. We have to use names. Ooh. I do. I do. In this <laughs> case, when you're telling me that that the the monkey is yeah. a chimpanzee when uh, sweet tea, I picked, you know what? Immediately when she from... said that, I knew what she meant. That's all Thank that matters you. is that we know what Thank she meant. Thank you. Yeah, let's just, English let's, no, no. Is about communication. This is how people like Chachi don't get to see movies because we just enable him to not <laughs> go see good things. So let's just reward Sweet Tea's silliness of thinking that an orangutan <laughs> is a chimpanzee. Listen, this I knew what anarchy. it looked like in my head. Actually, it doesn't matter what comes out of my monkey. mouth ever. Orangutan? Dave, is this a, is this a puppy or a seal? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's still cute. What's the problem? Yeah, exactly. Mm, no, I'd, I'd like to ask a, a, a question. So you're DNA. asking me about all these shoot 'em up killer movies. Uh -huh. Yes. Is, is Dave banging his head or is he looking down? I wasn't yes. sure. I was just, just crying <laughs> profusely. My head against the wall like Charlie Brown. Yeah. I recently <laughs> decided it was time to expand my network of movies. Wow. Okay. Oh no! And so I typed into my oh, no. uh, Yahoo search bar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why Hips is laughing. 
I typed she in. She knows what's coming. What is a good old movie to Big watch? Dumb, dumb. Someone who's Big never dumb. watched old movies. Mm-hmm. Okay. What? Sure. I You're typed sure. it in. And he found this amazing golf movie called Caddyshack. He's been waiting to tell. It's amazing. I've seen all the sports movies. So listen, I'm a, I'm a sports guy. So you, it came up with a movie that I always heard about. Wait, can I ask a question, uh, question real quick? Was this on Yahoo that you were searching this, or was it a website that ended in Hub? Yahoo? <laughs> mm, good question. Right. Go ahead. Good Go ahead. question. And so it brought up a movie that I had heard of, all of you have heard of. I don't know if any of you have seen, uh-huh. but it was not at all about what I thought it was. And that is what keeps me from watching old movies. The name of the movie. Oh, <laughs> wow. oh that darn internet. Disruption in the, in wow. the time space continuum. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wow. Like, no. We're I have screaming. control like you, Sarah. I don't even permission to have control. <laughs> no. This is like the... the... <laughs> You gave it to the <laughs> Michael Myers. I just I hit him with an electric shock. I run him over with my car, and he just gets and he back. comes back. All right, what is the movie called? It's called Breakfast at Tiffany's. Wow! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, One of the best. Did you know she was a hooker? Stop! I, not. Not that. She was high society. Awesome. Uh, she was a high class call girl. She, she was. I got to watch it. Really it was a movie about people going to have breakfast at she, Tiffany. I was mistaken. Uh, let's get back to the news. Uh, I don't know where everybody else is. Oh, you guys are all in agreement. Oh, sh- One of us can come back. Let's <laughs> see if the rest can do it. Good God. All right. Uh, good. We're, now that we've got all that out of our way and I've got a good 20 minutes to carve out of this episode. Let's just throw this out there. How about at the end of tonight's episode let's save all this zany fun. Let's just get through the episode and at the end, all of you watching, which has dropped substantially in the last two minutes, <laughs> all of you watching, hang in when the last credits roll. We're going to leave it silent for about 20 seconds and then all of us are coming back on and we're going to do an after party for Greg. I don't Yay! know if Greg can hang in. What Chachi's out of here? Nope. <laughs> Chachi, no, nope. we're, we're I've been to some of these after parties. No, nope. we're partying right here with everybody. Nope. So we're doing that. Let's we'll get into this. So, so many. last week we talked about the reboot of uh beloved TV show Bewitched and the fact that they're returning it as a uh a more serious noted TV show. I just read this news today. I don't know how I feel. I want your guys' opinion on this. If you're an X-Files aficionado like I am, get ready for a twist. Chris Carter, the mastermind behind the Iconic series, won't be steering the ship for the new upcoming reboot. In a chat with The Wrap, Chris Carter spilled the extraterrestrial beans, if you will, that he's not diving into the creative mix crafted by filmmaker Ryan Coogler. But hold on to your conspiracy theories. Carter is sending good vibes and cheerleading from the sidelines. In this surprisingly zen move, Carter thanked the powers to be, uh, 20th Century Fox and Disney, for seeking his goodwill, not his nod of approval. They weren't looking for him to approve it. They just wanted to know if if he would be okay if they did this. He said, okay. The reboot idea first popped up on the radar during a podcast last year when Carter spilled the beans about cozy little chats with Black Panther's Coogler. The challenge, reimagining a series that already dissected every conspiracy creature and cover up imaginable. Now, Carter's buzzing with excitement to witness Coogler's take on the beloved show. And guess what? He's not ruling out a return to the fold if Mulder and Scully, also known as David Duchovny and Jillian Anderson, are up for it. But hold your UFOs. Anderson has hung up her her Scully mask for the final time. She refuses to go back as Scully. She said she's done everything she can. She did the original series, two movies, and the two revival seasons. She's out. So that's the scoop. The x file reboot is a go, but without the driving force, Chris Carter at the helm. So I'm just, I loved the X-Files. Like, loved the X-Files. Am I boring you, Colonel? Do I need to? <laughs> God, man. Just couldn't cover your mouth or anything to hide the yawn in the midst of my talk. <laughs> um Anyway, they're rebooting it. They're making it more. They're making it more uh, user friendly. It's going to have a more diverse cast. 
uh, they're going to go down those lines. To me, the problem with the reboot when they did it originally for the two miniseries was, and, and I love that they embraced it, was that with all the TV shows about the paranormal and all of the movies that have come out, there's really no mystery yet for Mulder to seek because it's already being handled every week on reality TV. So to me, it's that same vibe, unless we're going to see this kind of thrown back into the Night Stalker time, right? With uh, Darren McGavin's time era with his TV series. If we take it back to the 70s, when this wasn't all already discussed and out there, I could see this taking on a new life of itself. But if they if they launch it as a new contemporary run series, I don't think it's it's got legs. What are, what are your guys' take on this? Any other X-Files uh, files on the show with me tonight? I love X-Files. X-Files a, a TV show or a movie, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> just neither one of them speak until the other one begins uh what was, yeah there you go chachi what was that sweetie uh listen i love the x files uh i didn't even catch the the last stuff they did i was just like it's 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 uh do we need i love them the last two little series they did were yeah. a lot of fun it was it was great fan service yeah the second little season was not as good as the first one. Mm -hmm. They still found in interesting ways to tell stories and kind of wrap up all the story arcs for all oh. the years. So I, I liked it for what it was, but I really felt like I hope that was the end, which right. is tough to say because I really love right. Mulder and Scully in the X-Files. And it's Mulder and Scully, but this new stuff is not going to have Scully. Uh, who knows if it has Mulder. It Why won't. not just do a new thing and call it something else? That's my problem with reboots. Just do a new thing. And call it something else. Yeah. I don't, I'm not into it, but I'll probably watch it. <laughs> Greg, thoughts? Hmm. Good. Yeah. All right. Chachi or uh, the Colonel? Yep. Microphone should be on wow. when speaking, Colonel. You're getting blurry and your audio's gone. It's time to <laughs> Chachi back into the mix. Chachi, did you mute him without telling him? <laughs> I did not. Okay. Yeah, Colonel, we got no sound coming from you. That's a good thing. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> the purple headed menace speaks again. Chachi, what? were you did you ever watch the X-Files? So believe it or not, Mrs. Chachi was a devout follower of X-Files. And so that was the one thing we actually watched together. Yeah. Wow. Did you like it? I, I thought Brad Pitt was excellent in it. All right. Uh, you know, a silent colonel is better than a talking chachi. That's what my fortune cookie <laughs> said today. So I've, I'm buying into that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. There's some of these things I just feel like. I, I think I, I think T's on to something as far as, you know, if you're going to do something, why not you go ahead and uh, create something of your own instead of. Because you know, Hollywood are more on the ground. I can't, well, no, we need the we need the banner of X-Files because that's immediately recognizable. Uh, they oh, did yeah. another X Files style show. They called it Fringe, and it was great. It was but, great. I have it, the DVDs. It never gained steam because it nope. just didn't get that same recognition or push. Had they called it X Files West Coast, it might have grabbed on like the NCIS and CSI stories have. That they, you know, they kept it in that collective environment, and but made it its own show. Um, so I, I understand the want and desire to watch a new show under a new branding, but I also understand that a lot of viewers don't want that. They want something recognizable. But it won't be, is the problem. And I get the brand recognition. That's how you sell stuff. Right. But it's not going to be the same, obviously. It's not right. going to have the same feel to it. Also, I don't remember Friends being paranormal. I don't Fringe. Oh. Fringe. Whatever. Yeah, it's all right. God, it's just. Boy, I tell you what, man. My IQ is just slipping every episode. Just slipping. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't. Uh, I don't either. We just. Uh... Colonel, can you talk yet? Ah, oh, that's oh, great. Good. Reboot yourself and come mm -hmm. back in, Colonel. Yeah, shut her down, and try coming back in. Oh, oh, here we go. Back hey. in and uh, <laughs> there we go, sweet tea. Seriously, Colonel, take yourself out and uh, shoot your phone. That's the best thing you could do. Um, hopefully, he'll come <laughs> back in, and we'll. I think is. I think whatever he's using in the battery is dying, and that. Nope, um, it's still okay. beeping. I'm still hearing a beep coming from either Greg or Sweet Tea. You're not coming from me. All right, so let's go into our next level of discussion. Uh, but before we do that, we have to take one more quick break. 
We'll do that right now, and we'll be back with more of the best in paranormal news. I'm Dave Schrader. This is the Paranormal 60 News. In winter's grasp, a chilling tale unfolds. Wanted Magazine's issue 40, Secrets to be Told. Al Capone's ghost, in shadows it creeps. A spectral mobster, where darkness seeps. Fourteen signs of a poltergeist's might. Haunting whispers in the silent night. Pascagoula UFO, fifty years gone by. A cosmic encounter reaching the sky. The ghost train of Tate Bridge echoes in the mist. A phantom journey where souls exist. Wanted Magazine Issue 40 is out now. Available from selected outlets and bit.ly forward slash haunted magazine. Don't be normal, be paranormal. We are here. We are queer. Get used to it. We are the Paranormal 60 News. I'm Dave. That's Chachi below me, Sweet Tea, and over to the side, the birthday boy himself, what did Mr. You Craig say? Lawson. Welcome to the show. Oh, Hi. below me. Okay. Below got me. Got it. Got it. Wow. I didn't say it. You did. Come on. Of booze. Clear that throat. All right. So let's go. These two stories came out this week. And I want you to know that both of these talk about a brand new um, study that has been published. And I've got a link for both of these studies in today's show guide so that you can go in and actually read the full studies for yourself. Like Beyond so. the Brew. Ayahuasca users share transformative encounters with death. If you haven't heard of ayahuasca, it's a South American psychedelic brew that takes you on a wild ride. Two studies now reveal that over 50% of folks who sip this ancient concoction may have experienced something mind-bending, a personal death experience. Ayahuasca is made from a jungle vine and shrub, and its star player is a hallucinogenic compound called DMT. Usually sipped in a ceremonial setting led by a shaman, it's a ritual involving singing, drumming, and intense introspection. Now let's talk about these personal death experiences, often known as ego death. It's when you feel like your sense of self is melting away, and you might even feel like you're dying. Sounds intense, right? Well, ayahuasca users often report it as a profound and transformative part of the journey. Jonathan David and his team wanted to dig into this phenomenon in their first study. They checked out 44 experienced ayahuasca users. Turns out a whopping 67% had faced a personal death experience, and most said it was intense. It didn't make them anxious about death, though. That was the important thing, but it did change their views on it. These experiences were linked to a belief in consciousness continuing after death and a heightened concern for the environment. Yeah, it seems sipping ayahuasca might make you more of a nature lover. In the second study, 49% of the participants reported these death encounters with 80% experiencing them between one and five times. Interestingly, the experiences didn't freak people out about death, but they did change their attitudes towards it. Now, don't get too carried away. These studies rely on self-reports, so there's room for a bit of storytelling according to this. And of course, there's no clear cause and effect here. In a nutshell, ayahuasca isn't just a psychedelic brew. It's a doorway to deep transformative encounters with death that might just make you appreciate life a little bit more. That link to the study is in today's program guide. Now, I did an ayahuasca journey and had one of those moments where life kind of stopped and it was pretty powerful. It is an amazing experience all the way through. Chachi, would you ever consider doing an ayahuasca journey or have you maybe had one and we just don't know about it? I was actually going to ask the question, is it illegal in the U S uh, Greg, what about you? Have you ever had a <laughs> ayahuasca encounter or uh, would you be up for one? Never. Never you have or never you would yes yeah can neither confirm or deny any participation in any uh such uh Dave, listen back to what i, I was going to say oh okay yes i i think doing an ayahuasca journey would be absolutely amazing which is why i asked the question is it legal in the u.s it birthday. is it is my birthday. <laughs> it is uh how do i say this it it uh it, it's not 
you, no, it's not legal here in the United States. You know States. what, though? You can go to certain churches and temples and do it legally. Hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll There's post that. those in the... Uh, well, legally. Oh, I don't yeah. know. We're not okay. posting where you can do that. But there are places you can go, but there are psilocybin treatments and things like that. So there are places that you can take safe journeys. Now, I'm not one. I don't want to go into some Brazilian rainforest where I drink a concoction and then puke and poop myself. Yeah. That is not on my bucket list. No. I really like the controlled environment I was in with this. Uh, it was like a chocolate bar, ayahuasca, psilocybin thing that I did. And man, when it hits... You're you're out in the stratosphere. It was truly amazing. Um, does it hit slowly or does it hit immediately? Like or... no, it's it's kind of like this. For me, it was this warm kind of em rushing water embrace as it was taking over, and then all of a sudden it's just like whoosh, you're shooting down the flume ride, and it was so exciting. But then, like once you're in it, you're just kind of like in Avatar. I don't know how else to explain it. You're just in this new it's version like of the good world. Poop. Yeah, chocolate. Um, how long did it exactly or not? I can't tolerate. How that. long did it last? Uh, I was it's, it's in, my, in my journey for three, three and a half hours. Are you serious? It was that long? Yeah. Yeah. I and it was amazing. I would I would do it again. Wow. I came out with saying I don't ever have to do this again. That was truly amazing. But I'm I'm like four, three, four years removed from it. And I'm like, I think I'd like to go back and do that again. Yeah, yeah. And what was the address of the place? Uh <laughs> Can't tell you, uh, but uh, there are practitioners that you can get in touch with, and we could do it in a, I'll send in you a link, safe Chachi. environment and do it. Um, how about you, Sweet Tea? Would you would you ever consider doing an ayahuasca journey? One hundred percent. I've never done one, but I would totally do that. Yes. Okay. Uh, how about you, Colonel? <laughs> he's, he's, he's frozen, and I couldn't tell that he's not alive. That's, that that's something. Oh, Leave him right nice there. Nice. This is perfect. Nice. Leave him right there. That's that oh, exactly. Damn it. oh, he's gone again. Uh, so, Greg, I mean, you know, you you graduate to the next level here starting April first. Yeah, You're no longer under the edict of law enforcement. Uh, would you be willing to to take a journey? You know, there's certain things I'd probably would be willing to do. I'd have to look into it a little bit uh, after working law enforcement that long and seeing. Um, uh, some individuals do some stuff that uh, created uh, drug-induced psychosis permanently. Right. Um, it's kind of like, you know, you don't have well, this stuff you want to do it. down. I'm not sure how much it is. You know, I don't think so. Yeah, you'd have to. That's why you do it with a practitioner that knows what they're doing. You don't You don't just go buy yeah, like a, a witch doctor. Yeah. Trump. yeah. Yeah. I know. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Getting racist I'm seriously <laughs> interested. <laughs> yes. It's an expensive journey. Um, about three hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, that's not bad. Four hours for, yeah. for Kalani yes. for, for Chachi. Yes, Chachi. That's like sitting in the hotel or the airport oh, bar yeah. waiting for its flight, and it's okay. just boom, boom, boom three fifty out the door. Kalani, yeah. just leave the bottle. Just leave the <laughs> bottle, and give me two of those fifty dollar ice balls you got back there. <laughs> and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Am I wrong, Chachi? You're not wrong. Oh, I've wrong. seen it happen. Yep. So there's that. Now here's the second one. This is another interesting one, but okay. Well, I want to go back to this for a second. If you knew that you would face a version of death, does that preclude you from wanting to do it? I feel like I had an experience in my twenties where I may have maybe experienced that and I don't know how, but I want to experience it again because it was a feeling that I have never experienced since or before then. And it was just pure, nothing but positivity and love. Oh, oh okay. And so. I would, yes. And I'm like, why this place sucks. I want to go back there. If I wow. could experience that again. Yes, absolutely. Hmm. This is born the drug addict. Uh, That's right. That is correct. Yeah. What about you, Chachi? If you knew that you would, you would confront a, a, re, a reality of death would it keep you from doing it it would not i think that's part of the journey that you you need to take on this so for me it would be good knowing that i would come out of it greg for you in yeah. a different sense I, I wonder being somebody who served in the military served in law enforcement has seen some stuff is that part of what would hold you off from having a journey for fear that ptsd that the things that you saw and witnessed might somehow 
come to life again for you? No, I think if it was legal, I would do it. Uh, I think it's really interesting um, uh, to have those experiences and, and, and think a different way. And, and you bring that back uh, to your reality and you have, you have this different thing. Um, I, I, I think it's very interesting. And, and that's one of those weird things like right now uh, within the next 30 days, um, I plan on experiencing a type of death because I am done with what I've been doing. Right. Uh, and I'm going to be, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to transition into this other person. Uh, and that's going to be really interesting because I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in, in like holding on to that. I'm interested in creating a finality to where that's what that was. And now this is what this is. And what was was once uh, the Colonel talking to us now looks like he's sitting on the shitter talking to us. I don't know what what level you're on. So are we like, I just got the tail end of that. Are we still talking about the X-Files or or what's going on here? No, we've moved on from the X-Files. That was uh, the ayahuasca journey. The ayahuasca and how it uh, keeps you regular. It keeps you regular. Is that a, Uh, a town in Oklahoma? I, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm trying to cut up here, people. Okay, got it. <laughs> peyote. How does that differ from ayahuasca? Does anybody know? Peyote. No idea. Colonel, yeah. do you know anything about yeah. peyote? Yes, I do, actually. <laughs> I think the difference between the two. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Yeah. You two are so secretive, <laughs> you and Greg. You're just clutching. You're clutching your pearls. <laughs> I can't talk about this. Can't expose it. Yeah. Um, I, listen. Get, away from in, me. Get off my grass, you little kids. That's right. I, I had two fears, snakes and death, going into my journey. And I didn't want to have that. And she asked me, what what is it that's holding you back? What's your fear? And I told her. And she said, oh, you're in for an interesting journey. And I'm like, oh the sound of that no that sounds bad and i was confronted with both within 30 seconds but it was like let's address this and move on and it totally changed my perspective of so many different elements of life and there were moments that i've held on to that were ptsd that uh to me and i know it, it it's with the things that greg and maybe marty have seen in the military and and out there and um Mine is minimal. Watching my mom die and take her last breaths, knowing there's nothing I could do for her. I held that like a burden, like mom would not have wanted me to see this. This is this is horrific. Watching someone you love die was horrible. So I just couldn't get past that. And all of a sudden, I'm given this gift. And it says, um, in, in this voice is like talking to me from everywhere at once. And it says, why are, why do you hold this in such a way that it feels like a burden? And, and, and I'm like, it was horrible. I watched my mom. There was nothing I could do. And it said, it was horrible. Your mother was there for your first breath. And she shared her last breath with you as well. And it just kind of literally like the mind just. <clears throat> and it gave me a whole different perspective on it. And, and made me feel totally different about the experience. So it unlocked some of the PTSDs in ways I couldn't have fathomed. Um, and dealing with forgiveness for being bullied as a child and, and some of the things I thought, oh boy, this is, this is a, a boundary that I'll never break. Boom, it shattered it. And that death of ego, that, that death of why are you holding on to this? It doesn't serve you. You, you're not, you're not defined by that, but look at who I became because of that. No, you were going to become that anyway. Don't let that be part of the anchor that's pulling you back. And that was fascinating to me. So I, I really suggest if you know where you're going, know what you're doing, these micro dosings and things, if you're with practitioners that know what they're doing, I'm hearing remarkable changes in people's lives from doing this. So it's worth, worth a uh, look, but I love that they're doing studies into understanding this. Yeah. Here's the second study. A new study dives into visual surprises from psychedelics. So there's this new research buzzing around about psychedelics like LSD and psilocybin. The study just published in the Journal of 
psychopharmacology is all about the funky visual stuff that happens when people use these substances outside of therapy sessions. Now, we know psychedelics have been getting some positive attention for mental health, but this study is all about what happens when people use them casually. There's this concern about weird, long-lasting visual issues called hallucinogen persisting perception disorder, HPPD. Led by Otto Simonson from Karolinska Institute, the study roped in about 9,732 people from the U.S. and the U.K. They wanted to figure out what risks come with everyday psychedelic use, you know, outside the therapist's office. What they found was pretty interesting. If you're trying psychedelics for the first time, you might be in for a wilder ride with the more intense visual experiences. It's like being a first-time cranker, uh, First time cranker. Right? I was like, <laughs> excuse uh, me. Uh, it says first time cranker. Um, what with visual are effects. we talking about? Meaning, I think maybe you're cranked up. You're seeing things in a oh. in a totally different way. Um, oh. So if it's something to think about, oh, for new that's users, what they meant. Okay. The Got study it. also looked at specific trippy visuals. Think super bright colors, seeing patterns with your eyes wide open, and being extra sensitive to flashing lights. Oh, and get this. There was a connection between reporting weird visual stuff and seeing unidentified aerial phenomena. Yeah, UFOs. Ooh, it's like I had a thought. Bing! I don't know whose phone is on dinging. Not me. Uh, that's Chachi's, I could tell. It's Chachi. Oh, is it Sweet Tea? Hmm. Oh, it's you. It's Chachi. Of course it is. Simonson pointed out the findings in the study suggest that psychedelic use may elicit unusual visual experiences, especially among those who haven't tried psychedelics before. But there's a catch. The study has its limits. They couldn't say for sure that psychedelics cause these visual surprises. It's more of an observation. Also, people who were sharing their experiences so they could see some memory twists being involved in this as well. The takeaway, if you're thinking about taking a psychedelic journey, be ready for some unexpected visuals. And hey, if you're a therapist, keep an eye out for patients talking about funky visual experiences after a trip. The psychedelic adventure continues. So this is, you've got two different programs. One is looking at um, these drugs being used in a medicinal therapeutic way. One is looking at it as casual users. Uh, I, I had one of the most terrifying experiences uh, of my life when I was younger, when a friend of mine dropped acid and started hallucinating and seeing angels and demons. And I had to sit there through uh, a three hour journey with this guy tripping balls and seeing the worst possible stuff that held me off from ever wanting to try any kind of psychotropic drugs growing up because I didn't want any part of that. Hmm. Going to ayahuasca, psilocybin, some of these others uh, seem to be a much uh, softer route into this. But Greg, I'm guessing you've seen your fair share of trippers that are freaking out and seeing the worst possible things on planet Earth. Yeah, we used to, um, in mental health, we used to get called out to a lot of uh, people that were having, um, you know, demonology kind of stuff, possessions. Uh, uh, a guy that I worked out with went to a party one night and uh, did whatever he did. Uh, didn't see him at the gym, didn't see him at the gym for months. And then uh, I did a, uh, a commitment over at the Austin State Hospital. And guess who was standing in the middle of the day room? Mm -hmm. uh, look up his file and he had uh, done some sort of drugs at this party and it just snapped him. Uh, and he's you're done, you know, so, oh, that's you know, there's those situations, but they, the, here's the thing is, is, it seems like to me what you're talking about is this, this mind altering thing that's very temporary, but it's, it's giving you these different perspectives on your life, on things, uh, the way that you perceive them. And it's kind of helps you deal with your pain, right? Right. Well, I'm like, you know, Captain Kirk, I need my pain. I don't want you to take away my pain. I need my pain. Just like Captain, you know, when I see you, I think Captain Kirk. So that makes sense. Oh, I know. Uh, I see it in your yeah. eyes. Good God. Ugh. Better room, you two. Um, so here, here's the thing. I, I can see uh, the complete and utter bullshit behind your statement, Greg. Uh, but I think if you took wow. it, it Ouch. you're not giving up the pain. It's still a part of who you are, but you learn the intricacies of it. The other connections, I think, are going to be a bigger, broader thing. Uh, if, if there's something that's tied you emotionally or mentally to a situation that you could now be free from but still have it, that's what the journey is about. It's not about forgetting it. It's still there. It's filed in your, in your heart and in your memory banks, but it's about learning the bigger spectrum on some of these things. 
yep. captain, my captain. I just figure, you know, alcohol and you just push that stuff down. You just yeah, keep pushing different. that stuff just, down. That's that's seems to work. It. Yep. That's seems to work. Working great. Uh, <laughs> that's it, folks. We are at the end of tonight's live show. But for those of you uh, watching the show, hang in because after the final roll of the the theme we're going to have a little after party and talk and we'll take more of your questions and hang out for a little bit uh and for those of you listening to the podcast thank you for listening and spending your time with the very best paranormal news group in the world i'm dave schrader and this is our paranormal 60. Wednesday night and I'm alone The Paranormal 60's on It's just for paranormal freaks like me With poltergeists and ghosts and blues and UAPs You miss a word, you do a shot It starts to snowball and we laugh a lot It's just like drinking with your TV friends I'll be passed out before tonight's show ends Dreaming the aliens are taking me away I'm gonna wake up for something late on Saturday. It's Wednesday night and I'm alone. The paranormal 60s on. Traders on. Traders on. Traders on. Shachi and the Colonel and the paranormal. Detective always traders got me and they all will be directed. He's got protective phrases and some crazy magic tricks. Even Scully cannot save him from the voice of Stevie Nicks. Traders on. Traders on. Wednesday night, don't be alone. The paranormal 60s on. Now one day they might even put me on a show. There's a ghost in my mom's basement, man, I live down there, I know. It's Wednesday night, don't be alone. The paranormal 60s on. Schrader's on. Words is on. All right, we're back for the after party yes. begins now, celebrating the birthdays of Chachi, Greg Lawson, and the Colonel. Sweet Tea and I are just going to be here to watch the camaraderie explode. We were born the same day. That's crazy. I didn't realize that. Very, very Big dumb cup. Yeah. Big dumb cup. Big dumb I like that. I like that. Uh, on, ladies man. and gentlemen, also joining the party from the Monsters Lounge, Jenny Monroe. Yes, nice. Jenny! Yay! And the very hey. Kermit the Frog of you. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I do. Happy well, birthday, Greg. Hey, thanks. <laughs> that, was oh, that was anticlimactic. Yeah, uh -huh. All right. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, of, yeah, exactly. So it's, it's, <laughs> yes, thank so you Rick very Roberts much. is saying, is anyone talking about the fires near the nuclear arms facility in Texas? Greg? A lot of people are talking about that. Yeah, there's a huge fires up in uh, the panhandle right now. What uh, uh, are we, are you guys in danger of uh, exploding? No, it, it, no, it's, imploding. It, it that stuff doesn't. Yeah, yeah, we'll cool. tell, that, tell that to the that folks. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, snap, get wrecked. Ooh. Yeah, that's, uh, maybe still too soon, Colonel. <laughs> A little too soon. All right, so folks that are here for the after party, this is your chance to ask questions of any of these morons that I work with. And if you want to know anything, you want their deepest insights, it's on you. And there is no hashtag sorry I ask. You are wow. opening oh, the can no. of worms. Wow. Get your because it's going to be the meal You're you opening up that can. What is Chachi yeah. eating? What is he yeah. doing? Well, that is the question. Sour what cream? is he eating? The bonsai <laughs> warrior wants to know. Bonsai All warrior, questions yeah. must be answered. Chachi, what are you eating? Oh, oh my God! Turn we can talk for microphone. him. 
<laughs> tapioca pudding and uh, it's ma mi instant mashed potatoes mixed with oh, ice man. cream. Is that what it is? I don't know. That's what a happened? great combo. Was I mute? Yes, yes. you were. Yeah. Mute. Oh, <laughs> broccoli. No, Brussels sprouts. Oh, see nice. what I tell you. And lobster oh, mac man. and cheese sounds too healthy. Oh, oh, see what that, I'm talking about. That didn't about. look like mac and cheese. All that doesn't right. sound too healthy, but it'll work. Dave, do you make a mean baconator, Jay? <laughs> Uh, yes, I have been known to. I'm I'm all about uh, big beefy burgers layered in cheese and bacon. Mm -hmm. If that but makes me a bad guy, take a look at the bad guy. Yeah, <laughs> uh, peanut, come on, peanut butter makes a burger. Yeah, bonsai warrior is a, a follow up question. What the hell is wrong with Chachi? That's what he wants to know. What is wrong That's what do you guys have to answer that one? Wow. Uh, Rick Roberts, can Greg still get me out of parking tickets if I send more YouTube super chats? Yes. Just try, Rick. Just try. <laughs> Just keep pounding the. You know, as a matter of fact, we're hanging in for you guys. Let's just keep throwing money at Super Chat, Super Like, Super Stickers. Yeah, let's yeah. keep giving Dave money. Yeah, yeah please do. Keep, yeah, go, please. keep them coming. Keep them Kim coming. Mikazi, Greg, any new board games coming out? You know, I uh, I just have that one, the Paranormal Detective board game, and I make two of them. I have them uh, created, two of them for each event I go to. Uh, I crack one of them open. I get all the speakers to sign them. We auction that off, sell the other one. And uh, and I think I'm going to keep it like that. And people ask me, well, well, why don't you mass market it? Because my vision is 200 years from now, some 12-year-old kid is going to be in their great-grandparents' attic mm -hmm. and are going to come across this thing and go, what is that? That is my whole and goal. Put it right it Beauty pictures of their grandma. Yeah, oh yeah. 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 Your but, board game. But, yeah. but Greg, but Greg, wouldn't that goal be met much sooner if you had like a hundred of them out there in attics? You know, I respect you highly, Colonel, but don't use your logic. With me. <laughs> yeah, I'm just wondering. Kirk, Kirk just, does not need your stock there. Vulcan language. Brenda Farrell, first season of Holzer Files? Question mark. Not the same of second season. <laughs> nope, it was the yes. second. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't Correct. agree. With no, it we was did the first season. season. They were different locations on both seasons, and I, they were made by the same creative team and the same uh, cast of characters. So I think it was basically the same show. Just uh, mm. I, I, I thought we had a lot more fun. Um, there we go. Yvonne King wants. Uh, to hear from Jenny with two ends because apparently you've been upgraded on the show. Jenny, what's your favorite round. cryptid? Is it Thundercow? It's oh. Bigfoot. It's not Thundercow. Get out of here with Thundercow. <laughs> I want to hear about your Thundercow. <laughs> Love me some Thundercow. Matt Johnson says, when was the last time we heard of spontaneous human combustion? I think if you keep watching the show and keep a close eye on Greg by the end of tonight, it might <laughs> yeah, it yeah. be a big thing people talked about. Um, Matt, I think because it's not happening as often as it once did. Uh, the 70s are it? over. Um, yeah, chemicals in your body are well, chained. And there's just yeah, not, you got to throw it right back in his face. The 70s. We've learned to adapt them. Although what it is kind of frightening is, do you remember a couple years ago in the news, probably like oh God, 10 to 15 years ago, they started realizing that there was a natural compound in baby formula that emulated rocket fuel. Okay. <laughs> what? Oh, Seriously. So we could have no, seen baby, baby formula <laughs> rocket fuel. If I'm lying, I'm dying. It's uh, it's you know what though. You I know, know. wondered could that be an explanation for human uh, combustion? All those people were drinking baby I, you, formula. You know, I was Dave, terrified of that. It was. Oh, but if I finish, finish take paper care. No, you no, no. There's like six people. Because you're, you're no. Dave, just, Dave, I think you're. And you then you're, something you're there. holding on to it in your fat cells, and then you're steaming about something. Maybe sitting on a on a massage. Pad and all of a sudden you go up. I mean, that was the theory that it was something stored in your fat cells. And yeah, I know that's, that's why it. I just said that. Yeah, uh, but it, why baby formula? Echo? Jesus Christ, it's okay, all written on the Oreo. Oreo. Hey, you know, Dave, wait a minute, sweet tea. I think Dave has something here. So I had to <laughs> babysit I, yeah. my nephew one time, and uh, he had a blowout. And um, I Tell swear, it must have been that. that baby food. Yeah, you do. I'm yeah, like, what the up. hell did this kid eat? When that happened? Yeah. Yeah. When you don't yeah, have kids and that happens, that's just tragic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Addie right back. wishes you a happy birthday, Greg, and donates $25 to my Venmo. So thank you, Addie. <laughs> Who does? Who Addie does Firebird. 
Yeah. Patty, oh, nice. what's Thundercow? What, what what's Thundercow? Thunder John Duarte asks. Uh, Jenny, I sent you the article. Did you read it today? Mm, barely. Yeah, Good work. Kind of skin. Wow. Who are the cryptid? <laughs> Sound like us. Uh, Thundercow is some. What, what state was it in? You remember at least? It's like, it's like, like Oklahoma, Oklahoma or something. Or something. Someplace where they've just like this giant cow has been seen roaming is it in giant neighborhoods. Or is it just a cow? <laughs> It's a giant cow. Giant. Its name is Thunder mm. Cow. Dummy, pay attention. Mm. Is it, is it like how big is a giant yeah. cow? Is it it's like just a cow sized cow? Size Twice size of a house or something? Size. Twice the size of a It's like <laughs> Thank you, a Eddie. blue ox, right? Yeah, no, there's it's a just blue cow ox. Size, and it would just show up and they'd be like, oh my God, it's paranormal because it's, it's a cow, cow and it's not supposed to be here. So how oh my do God, thunder hands are associated with this cow? Music says. They are, aren't they? Throw them up there again. They're. Look at that. See? Amazing. <laughs> Lindsay hey, up there on the right, no vaping. Wolf Z is not having it. Puffy. Yeah. Puffy. Uh, Brenda Farrow says Fringe sucks because of Josh Jackson. Oh. Which one's Josh Jackson? Who was, which one was that? I don't know yep. what's happening. I almost combusted earlier when Chachi you said he never saw a spaghetti western. That's a good point right there. Yeah, that's yeah. weird. Yeah. That just is also weird. brings up Greg just wants his own version of of Jumanji. He wants people to uncover his game and then be haunted by the uh, opening of it. Yeah. He doesn't. Yep. Yeah. I'll sign up Any for that game. crew besides Dave gone going to Cajun County Paracon in March? Crystal Goth, Goth wants to know. I didn't know anything about there, it. Right? Nobody asked me. Nope. Yeah. Me neither. I, mean, I try to I've keep it to so myself, books, Crystal. But... Yeah. 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 I don't um, even okay. notice that I changed my background during the mushroom visual oh, thing, but it. that's cool. Oh, look at that. Joe Hogan <laughs> says, Dave, what's the real reason you aren't coming to Australia for the paranormal tour? Here's the honest to God truth, Joe Hogan. Uh, leading up into the new year, uh, we were being sent a bunch of articles from friends in Australia telling us that Australia was looking at closing their travel borders and they didn't want filthy, dirty Americans and their bacteria crossing their borders. God, no. And we thought, boy, that would be bad for business if we got there and they like wouldn't let us leave or we waited to the last minute and then they close their borders. So we were going off of intel coming from Australia. And that's what basically held us from going over there. In China. Yeah. Yeah. What? Okay. Uh, Ristol says, not a question, just a comment. Tressa and Jenny are killing it with the Monsters Lounge. Oh, yep. and happy Thank birthday, guys. You. Born the same day. Yeah. That explains some things. Wait, hmm. is it really the Colonel's birthday today? No. Well, it is, just, actually. Oh, yeah. All oh. born today. 60 years ago today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What is today? Right. No, I'm, I'm, I'm drunk as a Colonel. He was born today. <laughs> today. He is born today. Me and I Greg. Got, I got a little Bill Cobb. You need to send him a big dumb no. cup. Let's get back to how great You know, we are. sweet tea, my birthday <laughs> is a few, yeah, a few more months later. Earlier, later. <laughs> Chris Cooper wants to know: Is the Ghost Tube app a trustworthy spirit box? Mm. Um, mm. I remember, I have the Boo Tube. I don't have the Ghost Tube app, uh, so I can't answer that. I, I don't know. Have any of you what used you talking the about? Ghost Tube app? I don't know if I have that one, but I I don't really mm -hmm. trust any app. It, it seems like it's too. Uh, Remember, it's too much about your phone already. Appy, it's too Appy. Google Maps. It's like Abby. I don't. No. Happy. Wow. Rick Roberts says, "Any news if the paranormal shows are returning to mainstream cable, or is paranormal dead on cable?" Well, Rick Roberts, here's what we do know: the main channel for them, Travel Channel, um, has basically vanished. Uh, I don't. I think they have one employee at Travel Channel now. Um, Discovery Networks bought uh, Warner Brothers, HBO, and $50 billion, with a B, in debt. And they're trying to carve their way out of that. And now they're looking at buying Paramount. So I don't know that we're going to ever see uh, the kind of paranormal television programming you're used to. But I do believe there will be a renaissance because people love this. Paranormal is a cyclical thing. And we rode a pretty good wave there for about 20 24 years. So that's not a bad place to be. I think in maybe four to five years, you'll see a new reboot just in time for when I'm dead. Uh, I can start haunting uh, the rest of the Paranormal 60 News crew and there'll be a TV show about it. Looking forward to Yay. it. Wow. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> thanks. 
Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, what did say? I know the Australian tour was canceled, but why was there not enough? No, oh, no I've already answered that question. Yeah. Um, here we go. Mercedes wants to know. My hey, question Mercedes. is: Do you all think the cycle of paranormal shows will be a thing? I boy, I'm like psychically just grabbing. Boy, questions you're like her. a psychic. I know. Uh, <laughs> yes, I do believe they'll be back. Let's see. Rick, uh, Jessica says, rocket fuel and baby formula explains why kids are always high speed. That is true. Yeah. Why well, you see someone yep. with babies mm-hmm. flying? Eddie <laughs> fire her, just shakes her, her head. She's had enough. Uh, let's see. Uh, anybody here of a man named Fred Dibna? Nope. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, Fred. Yeah. God, no. <laughs> It's Mr. Uh, Dibna to you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's Eddie. right. Oh, so your first name now, huh? <laughs> Thunder cows yeah. make cows make milk. That is a good Nope, question. they're just regular cows that just wander oh, places. You. It's fine. They're just you. cows. They're big and blue, and they walk around. Nope. Steve mm-hmm. Jones wants to know if any of you had a personal experience with Dog Man. Oh, man. No. That sounds like a Chuck Tingle. But you book. could play the Dog Man uh, song, but nah, I just don't do that. No, I let's not do that. Not loaded. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. That's an interesting question. Is it's very good. Do we need to know. I don't want to That's going to be the do? third really hour of the show. I think yeah. we're good. Yeah. I think, late night. I, think, I think people think about it. I just want to thank time. all of our, our viewers asking does. these questions so I can remind this entire team next time they're like, we should stay late. They'll be reminded <laughs> of why we have yeah, that question. That very question. I'm still all for it. Yes, uh, let's yeah. see. I Veronica think Park, think by the way, it. Sweet Tea, she noticed the background change. Thank oh, you. Because unlike the rest nice. of us focused on you, she's paying attention to your background because she's bored of your dumb No face. one talked about my That's background fair. Change, I don't care but... as long as I get some sort yeah. of recognition. Wolf Z you know says, couldn't see the new background through the vaping smoke. Vaping <laughs> smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, it's funny. Talk while I'm looking up questions. Weird. It's weird. I can't. I'm vaping. Uh, Dave's new book, <laughs> Theater of the Mind, Tales from the Darkness, is available now. Signed copies available. That's not a question, Dave. That's, a, that's so not Are a question. Sure? Are you sure? Hey, by the what? way, Dave, I love what? the book. Seriously, I'll, I'll, it's I really like book. it. It's a great book. Everyone knows wait, that, Greg. I, wait, I, can I please? Uh, hold on. I'll get to you in a second there, Lindsay. Uh, let me see if I still have my text from Greg. <laughs> Greg sends me. Hey, man, it, it, I'm going to paraphrase because I don't think I saved it. I know it's hard to believe. He oh, goes, hey, man, this book is great. The stories are perfect. I am gonna, I will have finished the book in 15 evacuations. And then I just <laughs> a picture of his knees and his underwear around his ankles sitting on the table. Oh, so, yeah. 15 <laughs> chapters. What? Come on. That's good. You broke Greg, it down. You should have an hey, OnlyFans of down. that. He does. Uh, well, I have one for him. Oh, okay. I don't know what he's talking about. I did none of that. Jay says, does anyone have any stories of the Los Duendes? Los Duendes. Los Duendes. Uh, I loved when they played Ricky Valance in the movie. Yeah, it's <laughs> great. They were great. Los Duendes. Uh, I think I talked about the Duende, Tata Duendes, I think is what they are. And we've mm-hmm. talked about them in the past on shows with Chad. Um, oh, God. Uh, Lewis, Chad, yeah, Chad Lewis. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I keep wanting to say Chad Lindbergh, and I knew that wasn't him. Um, but Chad Lewis has written about them. Somebody was asking about the black eyed kids. What are black eyed kids? I don't know for certain. They follow some of the edicts of vampires and, and demonic realm. Um, they also fall really closely into urban legendy stuff. Um, ghosts, uh, there's, there's the concept that they are hollow children, they are children born without spirits, uh, maybe alien human hybrids. So yeah. take your take your pick. Maybe they're kids who. So I Dave, along that lines, are you hearing more about that? Because <laughs> for a while there, you're hearing a lot about dark eyed kids now or black eyed kids. Now you don't you don't hear anything. I, I get stories from time to time, and I try to share them when I get them. I just it's not as often. Yvonne King says, "How many of you have written books?" I have Show like five books. Everybody on the cast has <laughs> written a book. I've got like ten books. No, sweet tea. <laughs> Books you no. can't read. These two guys. Shut up. Not not. <laughs> you can't handle the truth. 
Yeah. Sweet tea, not bookings. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, no, I don't have any books. Sterling wants to know, if any of you investigated Goatman's Bridge, I think that falls upon the paranormal detective. Uh, we've talked about this in the past, but I don't think Chachi or the Colonel have. Uh, Greg Lawson, what's your take of the Goatman's Bridge? So Chachi actually lives real close to that now. So we will be getting with him and his lovely wife, and we will be uh, Does he know about going that? back out there. Um, but uh, my investigation, you wouldn't consider it an investigation. It was more of a got a little bit of time, run out there, take a look at it, take some pictures, and roll. So, um, you know, I, I'm I'm not really qualified to 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 say. I've been there, but that doesn't I'm usually really stop you. Yeah. yeah, I got a, I got the shirt. Yeah. There, there's a really cool Goatman shirt. I have amazing go big dumb cup. Hey, big dumb cup. <laughs> Is Rihanna Trudell says, what's your opinion on Cowboys and Aliens movie? I wanted to love it. I love Daniel Craig. Mm -hmm. I love the concept of aliens and cowboys, and it sucked. There's it nothing sucked. redeemable. It was a crap movie. Um, one to five phantoms, negative three. I feel like oh, the, the company uh, owes ow. me. It was and bad. You know because I was, I loved the concept so high, and nothing came. Yep. Nothing came. That was it. such a great idea, and yeah. it just didn't work at all. No. Bonsai Warrior says, who's coming to Michigan Paracon? Show of hands. Jenny. Oh. There we go. Most of us. <laughs> oh, are you? Oh, that might be the first uh, full round effect. We, we're going to need two right. tables. We're yeah. going to need two tables. <laughs> just as Someone going, so sweet tea on the head. I guess that's up to you, Chachi. <laughs> Other side. You guys are horrible at this. That's my Chachi, head. Chachi, come on. <laughs> it's right there. Got to lean over. That's right. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, uh, let's see. That's entertainment. Better. You really know anybody who has actually seen a black eyed kid? Yes, I've spoken to about four or five people who have given me firsthand accounts of dealing with black eyed kids. Really? Yeah. Would you guys like wow. to hear one? Is read by Dave Schrader from his Please. book. Please. No. Please do. <laughs> Out of your book. Oh, you know, Greg, you jerk. The story is oh, called that's... Honeymoon of Horror, and it can be found. It's it's chapter three in my book. Uh, I won't read it because it's Greg's birthday and he doesn't want me to. So uh, no, I, no. When I said you no, it's A N O W. What are you doing? Yeah, the People prickly Craig wants to know. He wants to know. <gasps> sweet tea, yeah, is sweet tea's got a fan out there. Wow, oh, sweet tea, and, you're and hot. You got to love the fact that it comes from the prickly prick. That's right. Yeah, only yeah. the best for me. You know, you can see more. Oh, what was that? Shots you're popping them up. <laughs> super T is super hot. The paranormal six <laughs> Dave Schrader. That's Chachi having control of the con again. <laughs> That's Look right. Wait. Yeah. Okay. Pull it down. Hmm. Pull it down. Yeah. Here you go, uh, Chachi. The shirt idea for next week. <laughs> Hashtag big, big dumb dumb cup. cup. <laughs> Greg's loving nickname at home. Uh, <laughs> where else we got? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yvonne yeah. says Cowboys and Aliens was an awesome concept. We don't disagree with you that, about that. And yeah, Olivia Wilde yeah. was in it, and she couldn't even save the movie. No. Um, Damn. Let's see. It was bad. The graphic novel is better. Uh, I will agree with that, Kevin Morales. Thank you very much. Uh, do, 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 do. Let me see. Well, I'm calling it a night. Oh, Lindsay. I'm calling it a night. Got to get up early. Have a great night, everyone. Wow. All right, Rookie. Wow. Thanks. Lindsay, don't yeah. give up. Lindsay D is great. Sorry, Lindsay Greg. Is great. Music wants the big dumb cup. You can go find it at paranormal60swagshop.com. That's paranormal60swagshop.com. That's paranormal60swagshop.com. <laughs> go check out paranormal60swagshop.com. Thank you. Yeah, let me see what else we have going here. Uh, doo, 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 doo. Oh, look, Lindsay was going to bail out until I offered to read the Black Eyed Kid story that Greg poo pooed. So that, there you go. No, yeah. I, when I said Thanks, no, Greg. that was K N O W. K N O W. It wasn't. <laughs> let me see. Uh, it wasn't the prohibitive no. He that wants to be so in the sense. no, is what he's saying. It was the Thomas Wright said I had a child with red eyes and no face present itself to me. Jeez. Ooh, Thomas. That was that here. I'll tell you what. Like Hold on. Child. You know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna break no the fake. fourth wall. I'm gonna break the fourth wall. I'm putting in the chat wow. right now the link to join us. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, oh no! Wow. Oh no! Oh no! Thomas Wright, I want to hear your story. Click on the link <laughs> oh, no. and uh, join us in here. Yeah, let's give people the opportunity to join in. <laughs> the I'm yeah. scared. It's so if you didn't have a face, then how can you have eyes? That'd be, that'd be pretty oh, bad. That, if, that um, idea, 
You guys, I'm that's terrifying. the bad idea. Some kid with no face and eyes pop on there. Gotcha. Have you ever seen the original <laughs> Death Race? <laughs> What about oh, well, the remake throw... with uh with the insane clown posse? That one was an excellent film. Uh, no, I was asking one, so come on. What? <laughs> Lena Litenois says, I get to work from home tomorrow so I can stay up late. There that's, you go. That's yeah. winner's talk right there, Lena Litenois. There you go. Why don't you join us live on here as well? Uh, JR Scary <laughs> asks the question of the night. Oh, hold on, we'll get back to you, Fabian. Let the... Wait, what's going on here? No one knows. <laughs> Don't know. Fair no question. question. Fair question. Yeah. Fabian. No uh, oh my God, yeah, moving. Fabian's got a great question. Where did you have your first paranormal encounter? We'll start with Jenny Monroe, the guest. My first paranormal encounter uh, was in Arches, and it's when I definitely saw... <laughs> hey! Oh, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you were in Arches, Arches is that National McDonald's? Park. Arches? Oh, okay. No, no, see, <laughs> like, is that McDonald's or something like that, or what are we mm, talking about here? Yes, I it's was a at National McDonald's. Park. Oh. It's a national park, and I was out there super oh, late at oh. night looking at the stars. And uh -huh. I walked away from my group, and there was mm -hmm. definitely something creepy that kind of ran across the path in front of me, and it was not good. It was mm. scary. And what was it? I don't know. It was dark and it skittered. And it was big. Wow. And it was large. Yeah. And was flat. it an opossum? <laughs> it, was, it was flat? Come to think of it, it did yell, <laughs> I'm an opossum, as it ran across. Maybe so, yeah. he was a <laughs> I'm driving home yesterday. Go? My daughter's in the car, <laughs> and there is an opossum spread across the road. And she goes, What is that? And I said, that opossum is really, really <laughs> committed to playing that. Really, yes, he's right. nailed that role. Yeah, he's getting them he got that role. down. That's talent. Yeah. Well, why is Chachi a sexy version of Don Knox? <laughs> that wow. seems mean. Wow. Wow. of the night. Yeah. That, uh, I wish I had an answer. Please look at all the people trying to get on and not. Well, what yeah, was Chachi's first paranormal experience? Yeah, we're going to get back to it. Relax, Chachi. What was your first paranormal experience? Wow. Who has, who has the uh, con here? What's Chachi? Happening? Chachi, your first. <laughs> wow. Who's that coming uh, from? Chachi. What? Uh, that is a great remember? question. Um, we uh, lived in a house where an, an older woman had uh, passed away in the house, and we bought the house after she she passed. I think she was in her 90s. Uh, didn't know it at the time we bought it. And I was uh, asleep one night, and I woke up, and I heard a woman humming coming from the kitchen, which was kind of a couple rooms over. And I said, shh. Why are you laughing? Because I said shush. That's what you say, David. You say shush. Yeah. Don't trust ghosts, man. It's rude. And next thing you know, I got, that's right, Mercedes. I got three nail marks <gasps> down my back. Like Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. What? What? I'm sorry. What? <laughs> there you go, Loki. That's what I'm talking about. I've been wondering that myself. Been What's a makeup filter is what I want to know. All right. So let's, let's I'm going to pause the questions here. I got to pause them. Hold on, everybody. Oh. God. Take it down. Take it down. Uh, <laughs> Greg, what was your first paranormal encounter? Where did it I happen? would have to say uh, two separate things. We When we first <clears> went <throat> Incorrect. Office. The answer <laughs> is. Only one. Only one. <laughs> Only one. First. Go on, Greg, please continue. Now, did they happen at the same exact time? No, it happened at the same house. So the Perry Lane house in Austin, Texas. Okay. Uh, we moved there. I Perry was Lane. four. Yeah, Perry Lane. Four to five years old. And behind us was um, a National Guard armory, right? And uh, my mom would watch me stand at the fence there was a chain link fence and talk across the chain link fence mm -hmm. and uh, i would have these conversations and she always was asking me you know who are you talking to and it was the soldier that was standing on the other side of the fence mm. and i would have these conversations um 
I remember the conversations with the soldier. It wasn't until later that my mom asked me about that. And she said, I never saw anybody there with you. And it, it was clearly a soldier standing there when I was talking to them. I, I remember. Um, but uh, the other one would be inside the house. Um, I had watched Frankenstein that night. It was uh, I was four or five years old. And I'd watched Frankenstein that night and went to sleep. And the blonde For our listeners, night, can you explain? Are you taking your microphone into the bathtub with you right now? Because you suddenly <laughs> found underwater. Well, really? Yeah. You were How's clear and all hey, Greg, of the Greg, Greg wasn't the question your oh. first paranormal encounter? So <laughs> there has to be a first and then a second. Yeah. Right. But that was the no, Colonel. That was the first one that happened to him outside. This is the first one that happened to him inside. Yeah, it's my birthday. It's my birthday. Sorry about that. I forgot. I think Greg is the only one not drunk, and it is his birthday. <laughs> his bir <laughs> That's on him. Mm. Yeah, really. Okay. All right. So, continue. Inside paranormal activity, Greg. Go. Take two. So the blonde woman. Yes. Was coming to get me. And I woke up in this dream uh, and I ran out and I was going to run down to my mom's uh, room. And that's when the hands came out from under the bed and under the couch and grabbed a hold of my ankles. Yeah. Grabbed. I remember that wow. very, yeah, it was very, very vividly. I remember that. So I don't know whether that was part of the, the dream, but uh, I had secondary uh, witness to the soldier thing. My mom saying that he wasn't there. She should, couldn't see him. But I, I did. Hey, I got a question. But I never really thought about it too much. Uh, yeah, Greg does. Uh, tr uh, Sweet Tea, can you hold that question? Because we've got a guest. She's a... Oh. We, we've got somebody on board. We have Thomas a guest. Wright. There we go. Uh, Thomas Wright or Dr. Demento? Who are you really, sir? <laughs> <laughs> microphone oh. on, sir. You've got to have a microphone oh. that works. It helps us hear you better. Yep, turn the microphone on. Oh. We'll wait. Chachi took himself off. He can't handle all the competition for his time right now. <laughs> Thomas Wright is our guest, but his sound is not the best. All right. I so, know, I Thomas, do. I don't know what's going on. If you're, are you on your laptop? Go down to that little wheel, the little pinwheel. It says settings. Click it and look for the microphone. Yeah. Yes. You're oh, there. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yeah. No, I was on my, I'm on my computer. So, okay. So, yeah. Actually, uh, you guys know my girlfriend, Tabitha Meadows. She was she was on your show. Sure. Um, as one of the guests. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. There we have that. Good. What have you got to share with us tonight, Thomas? Right. Okay. So this was actually here at my house, um, which is a, happens to be a very haunted location. Um, and I was sitting in my living room here and on the couch. And... Um, a friend was, we were just watching TV. A friend was sitting across from me and uh, I saw this entity enter, enter my front door across from me. It made a quick movement from the front door into like where my bookcase was, which was about three feet. Okay. So it, it quickly moved three feet towards me. The dog saw it. I saw it. Uh, the baby saw it. The person in the other person in the room didn't see it. Um, and then suddenly, and it didn't like the way it made me feel. And then suddenly it moved from there to literally right in front of me. And I was sitting on a couch. So this thing is at my height. And it manifested itself. First, it moved like a shadow. Okay. And then it, then it like literally just like, boom, it's there right in front of me. No face. Um, red eyes. Um, it is, um, okay. I'm any a sensitive, sound? uh, it's any been sound? this way my whole life. Huh? Was there any sound as it moved towards you rapidly? Like the sound of corduroy pants whooshing on its way no. to you or nothing? <laughs> no, okay. there wasn't any no sound. sound no, no in fact, it was, and this wasn't like my first experience. Okay. I've had experiences my whole life. Mm -hmm. So, but this, 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 
this startled me because um, even though if things don't scare you like that, they still right. startle you when they happen yeah. suddenly, right? right? So this thing moved like boom, 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 like real fast. And it's right in front of me, no face, freaking me out, red mm -hmm. eyes, right? Yeah. I don't even know how to process what I'm looking at. The person sitting like four feet from me doesn't see it. She doesn't see it. But the dog's damn staring at it. <laughs> and uh, it's just looking at me and I'm looking at it and I'm like, what do you want? You know, and it said that it needed my help. And then it literally sat in me. OK, now I'm a, I'm not really out of the closet. Um, I keep to myself about my abilities. Right. Um, Tabitha doesn't. She's she's very vocal about hers um, and she's studying. Um, but anyway, so this thing literally entered me. It sat in me. Right. It like that's the only way I can describe it is it, it, very good it explanation. sat inside of me. Right. Mm -hmm. And um I didn't like the way that field felt. It wasn't my first time that I've been jumped that way. And I just, with my energy, I forced it out. And then it's standing in front of me again, and I'm yelling at it like a child, right? I'm a parent. So so I'm like, look, you can't do that. And, and it started crying. And now I don't trust anything that presents itself as a child. Right. <laughs> It, it's just something that I, I have a hard time with immediately, right. right? And if it has red eyes and no face, I'm not trusting it even more. So it starts crying, and it says that it didn't mean to do that. It was just an accident. Now, I'm hearing its voice in my head, right? Uh, this isn't – it isn't auditory, okay? And – um the dog staring at it, the baby staring at it, and this thing's crying at me. And I said, I said, I just, I just said, look, if you need help, you can come back to me and I will help you, but not this way, right? You right. need to go, right? And, and literally then it stopped crying and it left, like gone. And I, it left me a bit shaken. I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't like the way that it felt and I right. didn't like the way that it made me feel once when it entered me. Right. It was kind of like, it made my whole body vibrate like, mm, like that. Right. And I just, it was too much. Uh, but that's the only, that's the only time I've ever encountered something with, weird eyes and no face right that was very bizarre it sounded oh. like more of a spirit that was just looking for help than anything else mm -hmm. right but as representing I, as a child i get it i, I get you gotta have some questions right. in there not just right. make yourself an open vessel to any mm -hmm. being right and and i had never i've seen some spooky things before I grew up in Baltimore City, so it was, it was like I was literally chased around the city as a child um, and by things. Um, and uh, but this was something completely different that I had never seen before, ever um, or since. So, well, Thomas, thank you hey, for Dave. being the first one to uh, reach out to me because mm -hmm. Because of that, I want you to email me, David, paranormal60.com, and I'm going to give you a free copy of Jeff Terrence's book, Becoming Psychic, Lessons Ooh. from the Minds of Mediums, Healers, and Psychics. He was our guest on Monday night and uh, gave me one copy of the book to give away to a listener tonight. The book is out and available now everywhere that you buy books. You can find Thank more you. Dr. Jeff Terrence.me, but get the book Becoming Psychic. That's going to go out to you, Thomas. Thank you so much for thank being part you. of the show. Thank you very yeah. much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Very cool. Thomas, hey, thank you for taking that plunge. Dave, yes. Along that line, sir, um, is it there are oh. situations where folks have observed um, like uh, children crying or babies crying? Uh, kind of as a way, do you think that's a, that's a way of getting folks to feel a little bit more um, wanting to go and help or wanting to go and try to find out what's right. going on? Right. There more? are actually um, 
there are animals that make the sound of mm -hmm. crying children as well to draw you in so that they can attack. Um, so yeah, I, wow. it, it would make sense that some of these spirits would try to get, uh, you know, attract you through methods that would make you feel sorry for them. That's one of the signs of yeah. skinwalkers. Yeah, skinwalkers. Yeah, exactly. Really? Yeah, yeah we've got Addy Firebird joining us now as well. Our second brave soul. Addy, turn on your microphone Yay. and welcome to the Paranormal 60. You just have to hit that unmute button and we'll be good to go. There, I think I unmuted you. Nope. Got it. There, there you go. There, there we go. Are. Addy, welcome to the show and thank you for the donation for Greg's birthday. I'll drink it in uh, good health. <laughs> By the Yay. way, Greg. Purple is my favorite color. <laughs> it's a turn roaring your color. microphone on, Greg. Jesus, what a bunch of <laughs> yeah, words. Greg. Let's, let's show you how to turn your microphone off. Yeah. Can you guys I'm turning off? my microphone off. <laughs> I said, off? Thank you. you. I appreciate that. Yeah. All these naysayers here. Sayers of nay. Uh, Addie, what did you want to add to the show tonight? Did you have a story to tell us or a question for our my, my entire collection? life is one big paranormal uh, story, but um, the latest one, yes. I, mean, I live in an extremely haunted house, okay. and so does my sister. Uh -huh. um, so I was visiting my sister uh, a couple of years ago, and they have a lot of PKs in the house. And there was a lot of negative things going on. I think the word is Pekingese and their dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Something like Thank that. Thank you. I was confused. Yeah. I it's hard to call sometimes. No. PK, so what, psychic kinetic energy, poltergeist yes. activity? Yes. Okay. Um, so I decided that I was going to cleanse the house. And uh, I had my sister open up the windows, you know, the usual smudging ritual. And as I was going through the house and smudging, Something literally knocked the bundle of sage and sweet grass out of my hand. It flew clear across the living room onto the couch. And my sister just stood there like, what is going on? And her wife came into the room and all of a sudden she got slammed up against the wall. Yeah, we have a lot of stuff like that. So wow, I love that you're smiling about yeah. it. Uh, yeah, right, there's nothing more disarming than when the item that you're using to cleanse the area is batted away from you. <laughs> yeah, I, I literally, literally yeah. just smacked out of my hand, and it went clear across the room, and it kind of spun around, and it hit the couch, and she just looked so at me. So, Addie, like, oh. are you are you in the house right now that is haunted? My house is haunted. I'm not in my oh, sister's so you're house. At I'm oh, currently I see. At home in my, How in did my, you both end up with haunted houses? We both have abilities. Got it. Uh, so we tend to be beacons for any and everything that happens to come by. I actually have four portals in my house, uh, which have been uh, cleansed by my shaman, but unfortunately they open up again. So uh, the other day, again is bathrooms and shaman. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Dave. Again, I was confused. So yeah, thank I'm you. just here to translate. Yeah. Sometimes thank it's you. hard. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. that's hard. Yeah, <laughs> words is hard. Uh, <laughs> very cool, Addie. And now you do a lot of work in the paranormal field as well. How can people find out more about you? Well, um, I don't do, I mean, I have abilities. I've had them since I'm three years old. Um, mm -hmm. I tend to just, when spirit comes to me, I tend to tell people what they need to hear. Um, it's sporadic. Uh, they can always get a hold of me. Um, well, you, you have my information. so Yeah, but I don't have it right in front of me. That's what I'm oh, asking you to okay. tell the listeners. The um, grand listeners. Well, I don't want to give you my, my business email address because that's not what this is about. But um, you can always email me at adecmc at gmail.com. Um, I do possess eight Claire's and I can do remote readings. Very cool. Well, Addie, thank you so much for popping on and spending a little time with us here in the late, late, late show. We appreciate it. And it's always a pleasure to see you in the chat room as well. Yeah, I'll see you in April. Don't threaten me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you there, Addie. Thank you so much. What a sweetheart. What a sweetheart. Uh, all right. 
Azriana, am I saying that right? Yes, you are. Excellent, Excellent, Azriana. Welcome to the show. What did you want to share with us tonight? Well, I love the show. I look forward to it every Wednesday night. Thank you. And uh, I always come on a little bit late. I did email. Uh, oh, are you and Tachi taking the same carpool? Uh, <laughs> Apparently no. so. Where's the card? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't have that shirt. I have the others other shirt but anyway i appreciate i had that. a i had a story i was wondering if i could share it the the one no thanks for calling in though <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> now you know what it's like to be part of the team wow. right. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> definitely my favorite part is what everybody missed is when i pulled her off screen i get to still see her backstage and she's like yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, that's a face right. we always excellent. make excellent excellent yeah. Well, um, my story is that um, I think I had a Sasquatch or a Bigfoot this summer on my property. Do tell. Um, um, well, first of all, they've been doing a lot of construction where I live. Bigfoot has down. been doing a lot of construction near where <laughs> you live? Impressive. Yeah. <laughs> um, chopping down trees, putting up things and. Just there you go. basically, you know, I, I can hear the tree scream anyway. But um, anyway, so it was Wait, summer. Is, you just rolled over the most terrifying part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear trees yeah. scream anyway. Uh, so they're yeah. sleeping tonight. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Wait, yeah. First of all, uh, I need to know, is Greg frozen? Or is he really just <laughs> that locked in deep thought? I saw his eyes move. I I don't know. Oh, oh, there he goes. There uh, he goes. Uh, yeah. Maybe he ate purple um, gum from uh, Willy Wonka. That's Wonka right, right, exactly. I think he has. <laughs> the blueberries taste did. like blueberries. All right, so you think yeah. you had Sasquatch or Bigfoot because they were doing construction around your house, cutting down yep. the screaming trees, which is yep. horrifying and going Great to band. be in my <laughs> yep. nightmares tonight. So go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I stay up late. I'm a night owl, so I don't go to bed till like 4 to 6 in the morning where I right. am. Okay. So, um, in the summer with the windows open, I could hear the, uh, coyotes, uh, you know, howling and I don't know if they're hunting or whatever, but they make a big, um, a big, uh, you know, big noise howling and everything else, you know? So, um, I heard that and then, um, I'm used to that, but then after they stopped howling, it was utter silence. And I mean, I, I couldn't hear a bird. I couldn't, you know, the dogs were quiet. Everything was right. quiet. And I started hearing um, uh, banging on the trees with something really big. Mm. And then we have a couple of dumpsters on the property. And this thing was on the property and hitting the dumpsters. And it felt like it, it or, or, or it felt like to me, or what I interpreted it interpreted it as, uh, someone uh, hitting the side of it with something very heavy, and um, and then, you know, opening the top of the uh, lid of the dumpster and just smashing it down, right. and th and you know, so I was you know I was a little bit scared, and I started to hear growling and grunting and things like that. So, you know, uh, okay, so I, you know, I said, well, maybe it'll happen the next night or maybe it's a one-time thing. The next night, it happened again. But this time, it was a little closer and, again, with the dumpsters and, all, you know, this, this noise and everything and the right. coyotes and everything. Well, it got to the point where I think it telepathically knew that I was... I was there, I acknowledged it, or knew it was, yeah, or repeating myself, I knew it was there. Right. Because it started getting closer, and by the end of the week, the first week, I was scared to go out, uh, look outside my window, because I swear I could, there was somebody out there. And I could, and, and it would be grunting and growling. And then when it got to my window, I could 
feel the heavy breath that, you know, of its breathing. And I was just like all creeped out at that point, right? So I said, okay. I says, I'm not, you know, looking out the window. I, I acknowledge you, you know, just go on, do whatever you got to do, you know, that kind of thing. Well, by the second week, it started doing that again. And I tried recording it, but every time I tried recording it, I always got the coyotes. I got the sound of the dumpster, but I never got the heavy breathing. I never got the grunting or the growling from this thing. And I knew it was there and I could picture it in my mind this mm. this humongous thing, you know, tall and whatever. And uh, the sound was absolutely, totally scary, you know. So um, I wrote about it and tried to uh, interpret it. Well, I was listening to another public show, a uh, radio show. I don't Wait, know if I could mention. I, I was... Uh, a while back, I was listening. Another show? You, you mean you're not just solely listening to our show? <laughs> well, <laughs> your uh, show, yes. But, you know. But she accidentally. Sorry. No. Accident, yeah. Um, I was lis listening to another show, and uh -huh. they had um, uh, a mother and son uh, who, suppo who, um, ha who supposedly lived with Bigfoot or Sasquatch, whatever you want to call it, for 10 mm -hmm. years. And she had EVP or voice or she had recorded it. Well, when they played that, I I mean, I was, I was paralyzed. It was the same thing. It was the same exact sound, the same exact thing, the breathing, the, the grunting, everything. And I was like, you know, right. oh my God, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, could it, you know, you know, why is there a Bigfoot in where I am, you know, or a Sasquatch? And the Bigfoot's where thinking, I am. why is there an Asriana where I am? <laughs> exactly. And I have news for you, Asriana. While you were talking, I was looking at your address and going through Google Earth to look down using satellite imagery. Turns out it's not a Bigfoot, it was a skinny dipping birch tree <laughs> that stepped into the water. The, yeah, home yeah. Heard the water was very, very cold. <laughs> And uh, the tree yeah. was very uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 Well, that's cool. Are, <laughs> yeah. are you still afraid to go outside? Uh, well, I don't know what I, what to expect when, you know, when spring comes and summer comes, you know? Yeah. Um, Sunshine, hopefully. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It might, it might hurt my skin because, you know, I'm a uh, night owl. Yeah, I've got vampire, that same. You know? I've got that same moon glow <laughs> umber to me. I'm not, you know, I don't have the purple, the purple hue of uh, Greg Lawson to protect me in the sunlight. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much for being here with us tonight and sharing. Thank your you story. for letting thank me you. come on and happy birthday, Greg. Happy birthday. <laughs> he still has an X microphone on. What a knucklehead! Oh God! Oh, I'm kicking the wrong person. That's the. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's we his have, birthday. We have one it's last birthday, guest man. to join us, birthday. and then we're going to say good night because we will officially have taken the Paranormal 60 into a new realm for, for Greg's birthday. That we have. Uh, oh, we have five. Yeah, this is great. Ladies and gentlemen, our own moderator, <gasps> Mark D. Back in the <gasps> home. Air horn, air horn, air horn. <laughs> what? Me? All right, Mark G. Welcome to the show. What did you want to share with the crowd tonight? Uh, first off, I just need to do a quick test. Is this working? Never done mm -hmm. this before. I'm using this. You're great. Go. Yes. All right, cool. We're all just supposed to stare at him. <laughs> Read the damn uh, show notes. Uh, I'm uh, typing like, you like, I've had so up many and tell your story drinks. already. No, go for it. And you're on, Mark G. All right, cool. So, uh, I, I, yeah, I don't have a story. I just wanted to come on. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I, I, well, oh God, no. Oh, oh crap. Well, okay. So my name's Mark G. I was yes. born a long time ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was just about to start telling my whole life story. I was just going to start no, from ahead. when That's I came out of the here. womb and, yep. mm -hmm. you yep. know. Oh, okay. Yes. Let's do that. Okay. Let's do this. Is it all nighter now? Mm -hmm. this is, it's mo moderate. You're the last now. one. So you have to 
Let's Make do this. it last. Moderator rules. Let's do this. Let's do this. Yeah. Air horns. Let's do this. Pretend there's confetti yeah. behind me. That we're now starting the, what, okay, uh, 9, 10, 11. We're going into the <laughs> second or third hour. I'm going to try and go to the seventh hour. I can't make any prompt. We've got, oh, <laughs> the connection. Oh, that's there. so, hello. Let me shake the antenna. Let me see if we, come on, is this thing on? Yeah, I got to go. Let me back Good for luck. a few seconds. Yes. Oh, 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 sorry. Wow. I thought I, was, I thought I was gone. How could you talk with all that smoke in your lungs? Are you near a forest fire? Uh, actually, well, yeah, that stuff from North Texas is coming down south here. It's, 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 Obviously, it's crazy. It's porn audio. Yeah, I think all it's right, that so. nuclear stuff, too. It's, it's, <laughs> that's what happened to my hair. Like, Greg, oh, no. is there a point to your head, that, uh, a point that you want to share with us tonight? Oh, um, yeah. Well, no, well, okay. I, I got I got a few Shadow Men stories. I can tell one of them tonight and then maybe save the rest for later. Uh, if that's cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So back to um, for anybody who saw my previous appearance, uh, I'm going to talk about my parents' house where I grew up. Uh, that's basically where 99% of my paranormal experiences have happened in my life. So um, I was about 12 years old. Okay. No, 13 because I was starting. Anyway, whatever. 12 or 13, you get it, like preteen or just turned teen. So, um, an idiot, your damn story basically. straight. If you can't figure it out, we're not here to do it for you, Mark. You just sign off and you think about before you just jump on with these half assed. I think I was 12, 13. I could have been 27, Dave. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. still there. Mark, go ahead. No, please, we're waiting. It sucks, right? Mark, yeah. this is what it's like to be part of the team. It's oh. all fun and games when you can laugh at us picking on each other. But when you I get know. in the mix, you get yes. all fun and you know, games for Dave and no one right else. Here. Dave, yeah. it gets me yeah. right here. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Right at the end of your beard? That's mm -hmm. weird. Yeah. That's right. right there. That hair right, right at the there. end of his beard, <laughs> yes. <laughs> right here. This, right there. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, again, parents' house, so you're somewhere age. between the age of 1 and 42. I am. Yes, I was a human being, Give or and take. I was laying in bed, <laughs> okay. and I was trying to go to sleep. I had school uh -huh. in the morning, just a normal whatever night, you know, trying to go to bed. Got school in the morning, need to get a good night's rest, right? So I go to bed. I'm trying to act like I was a good student. I didn't care about school. I, I, I was just having fun, but that's beside the point. I wanted to go to bed so I could wake up in the morning and go to school and goof off. So laying there, I always locked my door, okay? I kept my door locked. What were you wearing? What was I wearing? <laughs> this has taken a turn. I believe it was a blue Walmart bag. Nice. Um, these were rough times, Dave. That was rough times. Rough times. Uh -huh. Rough times. I, was, I, I, I wasn't as fortunate as Chachi. I just wasn't. I, I was. You know, he's got those big. None of those, us are. Those, He's got those ice balls in his in his in his whatever whiskey. Oh, he's got the ice balls. balls. This story is taking a really order, bad turn. Order that blue Walmart bag that uh, Mark was wearing. You can look for the book and uh, the show description. The link for that will be there. Mark has a book. Yeah. Yeah. I, wait, I actually do, but not about paranormal oh. stuff or yeah. or uh, ice like, balls or balls of any kind. Um, thanks. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so. Um. Yeah, so I'm trying to go sleep. My door is locked, as it always was. And <laughs> I hear the door. Oh, I missed it. I totally missed whatever was You didn't, said. actually. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you didn't okay. miss it. Okay, cool. So um, I hear the door rattle. And as soon it, this is this is what made no, this is one of the things that didn't make any sense for this, of the many things. Uh -huh. From the time it took me to move my head over to look at the door, the door was already open and shut. I heard that sound and it was it was way too fast for like a human to be able to do that. So it was just instantaneous. I hear the door rattle and then I hear open shut and it's and then I look over, I open my eyes and there is just and my room is completely black. We live in a rural area, a rural area. Everybody take a drink. Um, and no, I, I prefer rural. rural. I was in a rural <laughs> area. Rural area. A woolly, so woolly, like woolly. Scooby Doo there for a second, but I'm right. Mark, go ahead. Right. So I was in the room. It's real dark. The point. I can't say that word. I'm not even going to try anymore. It was dark. Very dark. That's when my point. You get to look at Chachi's face as the story continues. He's like, "What has happened?" <laughs> okay. So um, my point is, it was super, super dark, and mm -hmm. I kept my room super dark. It's how I like to sleep. So, but I look over. I look up. And there is just this enormous, we got about eight to 10 foot ceilings here. This thing was, its head had to have been at the ceiling. 
it was the shape. It was just the outline of a human. Like I could see the head outline and the mm -hmm. shoulders, and then it just went straight down. I couldn't Did see any the music goes. I couldn't see any <laughs> definition of any of that. It was just okay. blackness, just and I mean blacker than black. And that's when I when I as I grew older and I started hearing people tell stories about these shadow people, and they would say that they would all they, a lot of them would say it was blacker than black could be. And I was like, yeah, that's exact because it made no sense how dark this was. It was just and so I'm frozen staring at this thing. I don't I don't think you know everybody might think sleep paralysis, but I don't think so. I don't, I, I don't think so. But I, um, so I'm just staring at this thing. Sorry. I just, I, I'm, every time I think about it, I like see it. I can see mm -hmm. it. So, We're with it. and it's just staring, looking down. I'm looking at it and I'm just waiting, like, what's going to happen? You know, what, what is this? I can't move though. I, I, so it is true. I couldn't move. So I don't know if that lends itself towards the other possible explanation, but this, I know I wasn't asleep and I know I wasn't whatever, because I had just laid down to put my head down to sleep. So, and I don't fall asleep fast. It always takes me like my whole life. I've always had this issue. Take me at least 30 minutes to an hour to fall asleep. It sucks. So if this was like, just as soon as I laid down and it was starting to relax. So then this thing says, and I'm going to, it's going to sound dumb, but it, this is my best interpretation. I just hear like this deep unknown and to me it sounded like a foreign language like a deep foreign language like it was mm -hmm. trying to talk to me but in something that I couldn't understand and I remember I trying to say what like to answer like what are you trying to tell me but I couldn't speak I couldn't move my mouth and then I just remember like a shh sound I don't know if it was it shushing me or just <laughs> kill mama. Mark, focus on the story and sorry, stop reading sorry, sorry, sorry. comments. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it might. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I don't know what it tried to tell me. I remember then I, I just remember this shushing sound. I can't say for sure whether it came from that or it was just in the room, but I just remember a shh. And then I was just out fell asleep instantly and again that right there is not normal for me so i wake up the next morning before school and ask my mom like did you see anything did you hear anything was there anybody like did dad have any reason to come in my room like like was there like a like an emergency like were y'all trying to wake me up she's like no not at all like what are you talking about they asked my dad he's like no i didn't have like no and he's like I wouldn't go in your room if it's locked unless it was like a life or death thing anyway. So it was just, it's one of these things where it's like either somebody broke into the house, came in and creeped on me. Right. And that's almost even scarier than the paranormal. I'd rather it be like, you know, the D word or some, the D E word guys. Uh, but um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. So that's, that's so one what of did, it, what did he sound like again? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the best. Okay, no, seriously though, it was like a like okay. that. Okay, are you sure it wasn't the colonel? <laughs> oh my god, wait! You didn't under, You said Hold you on. didn't understand what he was trying to tell Let you. Let me look at my and TV like, and get a good oh look at him. Oh my god! Oh shit! <laughs> oh god! Oh my! It was me this whole time. It was me this whole time. Well, whole you know time. what? Yeah. I just told the story. It's, it was the colonel. What were you doing in my room, man? That's right. Yeah. Could, it, could it be? Oh, two I don't different know, man. I was just pushing. Why, why did you be, shush me, man? Could that be when you were I just in, when it, uh, <laughs> the you. rupees kicked in? No, yeah, yeah. Both. But um, oh That's man, something. rupees. What are rupees? That's just like a put, point. Jesus Christ! This is just just a of insanity. Together. I'm listening to now. I said and this one time at band camp. <laughs> there I was... like your story. I don't like where these kids are taking the rest. My sister played the flute. What? Okay. Yeah. All, right. All right. But there was all you do in the chat rooms. Thank you right. for being here on the show. Have a Thank good you, night. Dave. Sir, sir. Thank all y'all. Be safe. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're done. You're done. I like the fact uh, that somebody actually wrote. Uh, so, last question: Do you all wear pants during the show? No. <laughs> no. Why? Why would you? No. Part of the rule. 
Just <laughs> stop it, Chachi. <laughs> All right. So the concept of my compatriots here was we should just hang out at shows. Hey, I never <laughs> said. I never Look. said post a link. That was Greg. I wanted to enjoy. I wanted to bring people because Greg doesn't want emails. I figured let's bring people in. Exactly. Oh, Greg's anti email. Yeah. Of what they had to share. How many times has Greg said we should be posting this the after show? I think it's every time. So every I was like, time. you know what? No, I'm doing it. Do that for his birthday. Like, I gotta be up at five. Yeah. Gotta, Thanks, Greg. Gotta, You're welcome. Happy birthday. Five. Thanks. My bir- hey, it's my birthday. Thanks, Greg. Happy birthday. Well, not anymore. Oh, uh, I guess you got 26 yeah. minutes left of it. So let's just sit here until that 26 minutes. Oh, no, no. I, I'm going to bed. Yeah, let's I, do that. Can we just appreciate that the last story involves shadow men shushing people? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank I feel you. good about that being the last story. That's it. I don't know where to go from here. I don't know. Just because I, the like, last one there, she said we rock. So thank you. Yeah, that's you know? a good way to go yeah. out, I guess. Yeah. Let's just take yep. that. Yes, and, uh, it is. It so uh, thank you all for being here. And uh, after this, you all. Now know what it's like to hang out with us after the show goes off the air. So thank exactly. you all for being here. Thanks for being a part of the show. And there is no big fancy uh, goodbye on this one because we've already played out the theme. Wow. So, Play it goodbye, again. farewell. All of you. Happy to say goodbye.